All right. Welcome to Master the Game. Uh, I believe we're live. Yeah, we are live. Uh, so welcome to Master the Game. Tonight we are playing what I like to call Riff's Light. Um, the, none of the characters are rules as written. We've tweaked some of the skills and things like that. So if you are watching this and you are familiar with uh, Palladium books or Riffs or any of that, uh, and you notice some rules things, feel free to comment about it. But at the same time, uh, just know that this is just for our fun. So that's that. And uh, I don't think, I think Paula and Victor are the only ones here who have played Riffs before. Um, Paula's played once, I think. Am I right? Yeah. And it was like only like five years ago. So I think us, I, for us, it was longer because we did it at that library. Like yeah, I, I definitely remember. Oh, gosh, that would have been like nine years ago. So I've got a lot of knowledge, <laughs> you know, from recent events to 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 base this off of. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I do still have the character you played that time, too. So do you really? I do. I do. It's in a, a binder behind me. Um, so, yeah, we... Victor has a lot more experience, probably even more so than me by a, a lot with riffs. Uh, Victor, how many years have you been playing riffs and playing? Um, I'm going to say about 20 years, maybe longer. Yeah, yeah a lot more than me, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's my um, zero days. So, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting some. You're getting something? I'm getting like echo. Oh, you probably have the YouTube video up at the same time. So you'll have to mute the YouTube video so you don't get uh, echo. Yeah. I know it's distracting when that happens. Well, <laughs> I, oh, I, okay. Did Come that on. fix it? Yeah, I did. There you go. Uh, so what was, I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, so Riff's, the, the basic premise yeah. is you're going to yeah. roll a D20 to strike, <laughs> attack, uh to do to do those things but when yeah. it comes to a skill check you're almost always going to use percentile dice and it's going to be based on what your skills yeah. actually say on your character sheet so you might be looking at your sheet and see that you have like basic math if you're trying to calculate um i don't know something real again real basic just typical stuff maybe it's just some algebra and uh you might have it at 80 percent just roll under it, you succeed, you roll above it, you fail. Uh, I might add a penalty onto that, which would mean that you're, like, say I I say a 10% penalty rather than 80%, it's 70%. Um, and that's that's just the, the gist of how that's going to work. It's really simple. Yeah. Uh, one of the cool things you're going to find is in combat, you're going to get to, it's, it's active defense. So if something attacks you, you get the choice to give up your next action yeah. to do a defensive action in a lot of cases, unless you have an auto defense action like auto parry, for example, or an auto dodge. Um, so the action economy is always changing. Uh, you're always able to manipulate um, the situation at hand, uh, and it leaves a lot up to chance. If you don't do an auto defensive action and you don't have armor on, uh, you're going to be hit, I believe, at a four or higher, if I remember correctly. Uh, if it's hand to hand, if it's shooting at you, it's a 10 or higher. So um, that's just how it works. Uh, there's no like armor class from like other games or anything like that. Um, so again, it's really, it, it's, it is fairly straightforward. It's just the things are constantly going. It's a little bit faster paced when it comes to combat. Cause even when it's not your turn, you get a chance to possibly do something. So, uh, with that, do you guys have any questions about your character sheets? I know I've asked you that multiple times in the last half hour, but I uh, figured I'd give you one more chance if there's something you noticed. No? Okay. I got I got all my browsers closed, and I'm still getting, like, an echo. Is anyone else getting an echo from me? No. I have no echo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it would be on your side, Victor. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. Do you have... Uh, I got all my browsers closed. Let's see. Um, so you have Zoom open. Is that all you have open right now? That's all I have open. Go down to your where it says mute. Click on the arrow. Make sure your speaker is set to your headphones. And see if that works for you.
You good now? No, no echo? Echo? No echo? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still getting, like, the YouTube feed through here. Yeah, if you, I don't know what your issue would be if you have all your websites closed down, yeah. except soon. Let me uh, leave and read you. Okay. Yeah, go for it. We'll be here. Oh. We won't start without you. Um, so does everybody else want to go around and introduce your character? Uh, we will start with you, Paula, since you're at the top. Oh, great. Um, so I have put a lot of time and thought into this. Um, approximately two seconds. Um, my character's name is Sasha Torden. Um, I, you know, she's, yeah, I don't know. Um, she is a elemental fusionist. Um, and the focus of her elemental powers stems from the earth and the air around her. Um, so... I don't know. That's that's all that we really know about Sasha. Um, she tends to kind of come and go and change her appearance frequently. So sometimes um, she gets sick of her hairstyle. Sometimes she wants to be a little bit shorter. Um, and she just <laughs> kind of goes with the wind. I love it. All right. Uh, next up is Peter. Uh oh, muted. Okay, uh, I had about the same amount of time. Yes, I am playing a juicer. His name is Blood Bam. Uh, uh, he's always in a hurry. He wears leather jacket, leather pants that have all sorts of different corporate names on them because he's got all sorts of sponsorships because that's how you remain juiced. And we're on the clock, man. What the hell's taking so long? Let's go. I love it. <laughs> all right, O'Neill Flynn. <laughs> Oh, I am playing uh, Rusty McLean, and I am the Glitter Boy pilot who thinks he's the best there is, and he don't take no crap from no one. <laughs> I dig it. We'll see how much crap he's taking tonight. <laughs> All right, Bill, roll stats, buddy. Uh, I will be playing Silas Two Shot Prescott tonight. He is a gunslinger, um, a man of few words but uh he doesn't really have to speak that much he lets his iron do the talking for him uh his favorite thing in the world uh the thing that he loves more than any other is his trusty 357 magnum that uh he keeps um that he keeps at his side at all times uh and you really don't need two shots but you know uh he just wants to make sure two in the head make sure they're dead double so, tap i get it exactly <laughs> All right, Victor, got it all sorted? Uh, yeah, I got it all sorted. I basically just did a restart. Perfect. All right, and, so uh, uh, introduce your character, bud. Well, apparently somebody else likes the name Rusty, so I'm going uh, uh -huh. Rusty O'Connell. He's a kind of a short little skinny guy, early 20s. Uh, he has uh, black hair, really finely red forelock, which is natural. Very, <laughs> um, yeah, he looks like, you know, he skipped a meal for about a week or two. Beautiful. And, and he's like about he's like five four. Well, he's a frail little guy though. Yeah. I like <laughs> it. So everyone else probably maybe not Peter. I don't know. What are you guys built like I'm assuming the mercenaries are, are built a little bit better, a little bit stocky, or am I wrong? What would you say, uh, over there, Silas? What's your build? Uh, no, Silas is Silas is pretty tall. Uh, he's fairly tall, six stands of six two six three. But uh, he's he's thin. He's wiry. Uh, not to be mistaken as weak. Uh, right. Just just more of a wiry, uh, more of a wiry build. It, it makes him more agile, quicker. He doesn't want to pack on. It's because of his height. That beef. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then Peter, I'm assuming you're a skinny guy, right? Uh, uh, no, I'm jacked, man. <laughs> no, oh, I forgot all, the all time. those enhancements. I'm trying to get that sponsorship, you know? I'm trying to get that sponsorship. <laughs> I got to stay buff. I love it. I love it. All right, cool. All right, so you guys, uh, let me pull up my notes. Here we go. Uh, so you guys have all been requested for a job to meet up at the square in the town center. You know the reasons for being requested are that you are anti-coalition and you are all mercenaries for hire. 
Uh, all financial arrangements have been taken care of and uh, deposited into your account already. Uh, you know this job is only going to take upwards of a few days, uh, and you have all been paid a thousand credits each. Uh, the place you will be meeting up in uh, here in Indiana is a massive three-story building, uh, and it's well fortified. Uh, it's got walls around it. It's got a large courtyard. Um, and uh, in fact, you're, where you approach from, uh, there's... Uh, it, it's like miles wide, like the fence around this place. Like it's massive. So, um, so like, so like the Capitol then is what. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it kind of looks like that, but not really. I mean, this is like, so everyone watching, this is a post-apocalyptic setting. So like even walking through this town, it looks more like a junkyard, but then this one building is made of stone and like, you know, even the windows have like thick steel shutters um, that are ready to close at a moment's notice. Um, so, so I, so I maintain still like the <laughs> capital, right? Post-apocalyptic. Uh, yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he's not wrong. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, so again, you guys know you're going. If if you guys have the feed up, uh, there is a map that shows where you guys are going. You're going from like eastern, uh, middle Indiana. You're going to go up through western Michigan. Uh, across Lake Huron and into uh, what is called Ironheart, which is a coalition ruled area. Uh, very high tech up there. Uh, you guys would know that Michigan is um, mostly barren. A lot of the places have been destroyed with the cataclysm of the past. Uh, high magic, uh, lots of magical creatures to look out for. Um, occasionally a coalition patrol will come in from uh, the west uh, from the lakes. Uh, the coalition is trying to slowly take over this area to make it a coalition run area as well because coalition is humans that are against magic. Basically, they think to protect the human race, they have to get rid of uh, anything that's unnatural for the most part. That's me paraphrasing, of course. Uh, so uh, when you guys, I'm gonna let you guys introduce how you arrive to this building. Uh, some of you guys have your own vehicles, for example. So uh, with that, Paula, how do you arrive at this big fortified place? Dude, why I always got to go first? Because you're at the top. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to leave the Zoom chat and enter again. <laughs> um, so um, so Sasha's actually just, just walking up. Um, kind of looking at the area around her. She doesn't enter in any fancy vehicles or anything like that. Um, she just sort of looks like a, a traveler. Um, she's wearing um, buckskin clothing and has, you know, gloves and boots on. She looks like she's definitely dressed for the cold. Um, but yeah, she's just she's just walking in. Perfect. With her big backpack. So uh, yeah, you walk up with your big backpack, and uh, you hear a noise in the distance. And uh, how does Blood Bam arrive? Uh, on his motorcycle, as fast as possible. Uh, maybe not max speed, but definitely dangerous that people would have to duck and dive out of the way. Because time is money, and money is time, and I'm going to be dead pretty soon anyway. <laughs> so I got to get here, and if I see anybody, like, looking or taking notice, or they've got, like, a compad or something to take a picture, I'm going to pop a wheelie, because that might get back to the sponsors and other sponsors, and I may get more what I need. <laughs> so. Do, do me a favor. I'm a, do you have acrobatics on your skills? Yes, I do. Uh, roll acrobatics. Yes roll here we go eight 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 percent eight percent oh my gosh okay so you see uh uh over there sasha you see this bike come whirling around the like this uh shanty and you see a, a pile of metal and it hits the metal gets about i don't know 15 feet in the air lands and then it like rides up on the wall of this fortification sideways and pulls up right next to you. 
oh boy, that seems a little, little excessive. <laughs> Did you what see that? Ha- Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Did you see that? That was impressive, wasn't it? It was good, wasn't it? I mean, who exactly are you trying to impress? Yourself? Well, I, uh, that's easy. Everyone else, though. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you could have really hurt somebody. Yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> and if they did, it's on them. When's this well, meeting supposed to start, man? Is Are we late? I, 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 I don't really know. What time is it anyway? I don't know. It's already late, man. What's what's going on? What's what's taking them? Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe you should go look for everybody. I will give you so something to do. I'm going to take off and look for whoever's supposed to be in charge. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, Rusty McLean. How do you approach? Uh, well, I guess we'll be. Uh, I'll be piloting my nice glitter boy. You'll see it coming in just, just one step at a time. Stomping, 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 clunking. Just coming right in like this, shaking the ground. Everything's just rattling. You don't know what's going to happen. It's just coming in like it's just like it's ready to chop down a tree or something. So <laughs> it's kind of just stops right in front of everybody. So you guys see this like 20 foot tall robotic mech. Uh, come plop up right next to uh, you guys. And as it was walking in, some of the metal buildings were shaking so much that you thought they may have fallen apart, but they held together pretty well. Um, And he plops right in there. Uh, Next, making their way into the scene is the other Rusty, Rusty O'Connell. See, like, picture something about the size of a U-Haul truck, the little ones you get. Two big front wheels, about four or five feet tall, one back wheel, kind of comes to a halt. Everybody knows that the left-hand turn signal is on. Uh, in the backside door, it flings open, rope ladder gets tossed down. You see this skinny little short guy try and carry a big long rifle, whole bunch of tools all over the place. And he starts climbing it down. Walks over to left-hand turn signals, taps it a few times, still blinking, and he goes join everybody else. Hey guys, what's up? Wow, that's a really good bike for last year's model. <laughs> <laughs> we can modify that just a little bit, so maybe you could do something cool with it. And then Silas, how do you approach? Uh, Silas actually rides up. Uh, full trot on peppermint. It's beautiful Appaloosa. Uh, it really comes out of nowhere. Um, reins her in just as he approaches the group. Uh, hops off, sort of pats her neck, gives her some, uh, pulls some candy corn out of his pocket, and starts feeding. And he's whispering to her as uh, as he's as he's looking around at the uh, at the rest of the group. <laughs> Well, Sasha was really starting to wonder if she was in the right place until she saw him arrive on horseback, and now she's she's feeling a little bit more, a little bit more comfortable um, with her surroundings. So, uh, as you guys are standing there, you see these two uh, large iron doors open. Uh, they're about ten feet tall, so if you couldn't fit your glitter boy through the door, for example. Uh, but the doors just open up wide, and uh, you see into what looks like an empty room. Tell you what, guys, you wait out here, and I'll go check see if it's safe. Great Sasha, idea. Sasha, can you lead the way? Ah. <laughs> uh- you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys go first. Why don't I just just make sure nobody's following us? I don't know. We can, I kind of covered my tracks on the way here, man. What that that car of mine? It blends. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure uh, uh, Robot Boy blended in really well too. <laughs> you can see oh. the the footprints of the Glitter Boy <laughs> for the last like 50 yards. Wow, this this is cool. I'll check my hair in the reflection. Call me a little bit. <laughs> so, so you guys make your way into this room. 
And uh, when you walk in, the door closes behind you, and like uh, you can hear like it air locks shut. And there's another door in the room, and through it uh, walks a guy with a clipboard, and he says, "Ah, you guys are just on time. Uh, just through here into the waiting room, and um, he will be with you in just a moment." Will there be any snacks? Yes, yes, yes. Of course, we'll, we'll give you guys refreshments. And uh, he ushers you into what is clearly a waiting room, chairs, seats, and things like that. Uh, You enter the room, and after a very brief wait, a man with a limp walks into the room. Now, to the juicer, that seems like eternity. Uh, The man who you know as Wayne Jones stands at the head of the room. All right, guys, so you know you will be traveling into the, the Iron Heart, just across Lake Huron. Uh, Now, we have a mobile headquarters that will be taking you up there unless you choose to take your own transportation and travel behind it. If you have anything small, like a motorcycle, hover bike, uh, we can keep it inside of the mobile HQ. It'll have a small bay. Uh, And don't worry about uh, your glitter boy. We actually have a spot for that as well. Uh, It'll be kind of just right on the back of, of this mobile HQ. So you don't have to, you know, pilot it the whole time. As for your Mountaineer, you might want to take that separately. We don't have a big enough bay for that, unfortunately. Uh, It's a little bit too wide and tall for that. Uh, And the length is also kind of a problem. Uh, What about his horse? Oh, yeah, yeah, his horse. horse. Yeah, yeah, we we actually have a spot for livestock as well. So uh, it'll it'll fit Peppermint goes where I go. Yeah, yeah, of of course. We do that. You can't keep up? I might have something for it. Can I talk to it? <laughs> don't go, don't go, don't go near, don't go don't, near my horse. Don't, don't let him, don't let him get too close. Yeah, we we suspected as much. And by the way, don't worry, uh, we do have blood band. We do have a turret. If you get bored, that you can man if you feel like it. Um, you have enough ammo. Oh, gosh. oh, it won't. But that's okay. Oh, <laughs> I'll if you guys stop for gas, I'm sure you'll be able to get that filled up. Uh, so, you guys know uh, this voyage is going to be very dangerous. I mean, you're traveling into hostile coalition territory. Uh, you will stop uh, shortly before you get to the northern Michigan area uh, to fill up. It's just over the halfway mark. Um, we have to get more fuel into it because this thing that you guys are in is going to use a ton of fuel. Um, it's then, once you get to Lake Huron, it is going to uh, ride across the top of the lake into Ironheart and, uh, it, until you guys get to the land. Um, now, while you're there, again, you're basically going to be sitting ducks. So do you have any questions so far? Sounds dangerous for them. <laughs> I like your moxie. <laughs> Don't worry about me there, bud. I've oh, oh, what, 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 one quote, one really quick question, no problem, then it'll be fine. If we happen to find something along the way, do we get to keep it? As long as it doesn't already belong to the mobile HQ. So everything else in the world we can pick up. Sure. As long All as right. you don't bring trouble on the mobile HQ. That's the wrong problem. Um, yeah, I noticed you were kind of low on cupcakes out there. Yeah, no cupcakes. Uh, but we do have these energy bars, uh, and he hands you one. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah, I've been trying to put on some weight here, you know. I'm hoping to hit 110 soon. When you open the pack, it looks like just a green jelly. Wow. You're going to need about 100 of those for it, for it to do anything, man. Don't <laughs> worry, I got a pocket full of stuff right here to help you. I'll hook you up. You'll be All right. Good. You're the man. You're a man, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> it's, you're so high up there and... <sighs> You'll make it. Right. You'll get there. You'll be flying. Uh, so when you get to Lake Huron, assuming you're taking the Mountaineer separate, you can probably pull that up on top of it. Uh, it will, it'll deploy a ramp, and you can actually park it on top for the sake of crossing Lake Huron. Okay. Um, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah. So it, we got that all under control. Uh, now, you might be asking yourselves why your services are needed, and it is really quite simple. The mobile HQ is a a massive target. It has weaponry, but limited range of vision. Uh, 
we don't have a good targeting system and because it's so large it doesn't you know it doesn't turn well uh it's it's again it's just a target it's a large target people can see and hear it coming from miles away and so we need people that can help out you know kind of patrol around it should things get dicey we need to be able to send people out we have pilots we've got people manning some guns in case things get close uh, but again, that's where you guys come into play. It has one, one massive missile in case something gets greatly out of control. And, you know, we'll give you guys the code to actually operate that. Um, you'll have to get on top of it. And there is a bay that you can go into and you're just punching your key code and you'll be able to do it. Um, Wait, do we each have separate key codes? Or it would be just your own individual one. code. Yes. Yep. Do you have to give does does I'm gonna look over at the the juicer um, mm -hmm. as I say this because I forgot his name and say <laughs> can can he not have a a key code <laughs> maybe he he just seems a little you know fire friendly <laughs> <laughs> so as. I guess I'm just having visions of Dr. Strangelove when you said you have to get on top of it, and Silas really just wants to ride this fucking missile now. Right? Sorry. So just, just Dr. Strangelove style. This is how this one shot ends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it depends. I repeat, this missile is not just for a small little truck. This is if things get really out of control, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last yeah. resort big tank or something like holding thousands of guys, hundreds of guys. That's you, what you use it for. Do you think you're deterring me? Because that's <laughs> I'm not deterring anyone. We're excited. I just, okay. just want to make no. it clear. This is a very expensive thing. If, if it can get to its destination, it can be more used to the, the town, the resistance that you're taking it to. Um, so I think he's just re-emphasizing, Bill, because he knows we're gonna get into the first combat. All right, I'm crying here. Well, <laughs> you guys, you guys are gonna wait for the first combat. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing is a factory on wheels. Okay, uh, this pl this thing is sixteen thousand square feet, multiple stories. Like this is a big, big deal. Um, it's going to roll over trees. Like there's almost no obstacle that this thing can't just bust right through. I can right? roll over trees. Don't get <laughs> stuck in front of it while it's moving. All right. Uh, when it arrives to the des destination, it will be staying there. We have arrived or we have arranged transportation for you guys to come back if you choose. Otherwise you can stay there and you can help the resistance. So and that's uh, it. So, Do you have any questions? Yeah, our essentially we're just sort of escort and guard then, correct? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, this has, you know, we have uh, civilians on board that are going to be helping the resistance in various ways. We have scientists, we have doctors. Um, we do have some grunts, but they're, you know, they're not as as well trained as you guys. Um, so, you know, we have all that. We do have a lab on on the mobile HQ. So it's also imperative that, you know, the main body of the, and the center does not get damaged because it could be catastrophic. If something What do you mean happens. lab? You I'm about? sorry? What do you mean lab? What are you talking about? Oh, well, the scientists are doing some work that's gonna help against the citizens, the Zitizix, uh in Western Canada that are, it also might help against the coalition of Ironheart, so. It's, it's they're they're working on some big breakthroughs. That's all I can say. It's the rest of it is all classified. Um, but seeing that you guys are also enemies of the coalition, I just it was good for you to know that. All right. All right. All right. So, well, then make your make your way this way, uh, and just sign this paper this paperwork. Uh, all this paperwork is is stating that it is okay to transport your vehicles. Uh, as for you, sir, Rusty O'Connell, uh, yep. you're going to be driving your own. So you, if you want to just pull it up around, we'll open the gate to the side uh, and you can pull up. If anybody wants to ride with him, you're more than welcome. Uh, but otherwise, you can ride on top. 
You can make your way into the, the mobile HQ. It is up to you where you guys would like to be. Um, you know, like I said, we have guns all over the place uh, that are manned currently. Uh, there's one gun we left open on the back for our friend Bloodbam over there because uh, we anticipated he probably wanted to be on one. Uh, but if, if one of you wants, I mean, we can actually let someone take a break if, if you really want to get on a gun. Uh, it's up to you. Well, I'll be I'll driving. Move. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'll, I'll be driving my finely tuned machine out there. Yes, just make sure you stay behind and not okay. in front. It behind. can be disastrous if you get in front. All right, taking out my notebook. Stay behind. Don't let lab go boom. Okay, I think I got the key details. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, so Silas pulls a bag of candy corn out from his pocket and hands it to the guy and says, okay. So she gets candy corn first thing in the morning. You brush her every night before she goes down. Uh, and you make sure, you, you absolutely make sure that, that, there are, that, there are, that there's no other animals in her presence. Okay, we will, we will keep her separated. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Uh, all of, we will actually have her uh, in one of the bays in the back. We'll make it nice and comfortable for her. Uh, should you decide to get, get on board and, and ride her out, you'll be able to drop the ramp down at any point during this voyage. Uh, uh, as for you, I'm sir, satisfied with that. What's that? I, I'm satisfied with that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> As for you, Rusty McLean, uh, your glitter boy is going to be dead center in the back, uh, and it has the tallest bay. So again, if you would like to get into it at any point, you can, and uh, we'll just drop the door open for you as well if you want to pilot your glitter boy at any point. Uh, it's a quick release hatch, so it'll be just a quick, simple, press your four digit code and it'll drop out. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Now, Blood Bam. I mean, you just have your motorcycle. I mean, that's easy. We could put that on top. I mean, I know how you are. We could put it in one of the, the bays that are actually above. So you have to like drive out the ramp and like get some air to get out. I mean, it's up to you. Yeah, air, you definitely. Yeah. All right, perfect. That saves up some room on the bottom. Yeah, code, you got that code? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Code, uh, what is it? So he, he gives, you, gives you a badge that actually has your picture ID that must've been taken as you guys were in the first room and walked in. Uh, and it's got your four digit code on it. Okay, good. Uh, and he hands out badges to the rest of you as well. Uh, this badge makes me look short. <laughs> yeah, it's like your nose up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so uh, they escort you through the building uh, to a spot where um, there's another large iron door and it opens and you're, it's al it almost looks like a runway. Like this used to be an airport. And uh, the only thing you see is this large uh, vehicle. And when you walk out, it, it has tons of wheels on, along the sides and along the front. Uh, and the, the actual center of the front, you can see this protruding nose that is clearly where like the people driving this thing and uh, and things like that is located. Uh, you see this large tube that almost looks like a cannon on the top uh, that's just sitting on the on the top sticking out. Um, it's probably a good 80 yards long. Uh, the, the opening of it could probably fit your whole glitter boy inside of it if it wanted to. Um, now this thing is at least a quarter mile wide. Um, and you can see there's uh, some doors uh, to each side of where the nose sticks out that you could walk up into. And it actually has some stairs that look like they've been folded down so you could climb into it. Wow. Uh, fast does this thing go? This thing will go 60 <clears throat> miles per hour. And how many hours can it maintain that? Uh, it will be able to maintain it for at least eight hours. So it's not too shabby. I mean, the whole underside has fuel cells, and uh, it's it should be good to go. You will be stopping, like I said, for to refuel a little bit past the halfway point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's using internal combustion engines? 
No, no, no. Okay. Nope, like I said, fuel cells all along okay. the bottom of this whole thing. It's all electric. There is a backup generator that runs on fuel, though. Okay. That's... Seems right, like so... a pretty average design, but okay. <laughs> so where would you guys like to position yourselves? In or on or... Where would you like to be? Oh. I'll start with you, Sasha. <laughs> Man... I was trying to let somebody else go first. Um, so, I mean, 60 miles an hour sounds maybe a little fast to to ride on top. Um, but is there is there a place where I could feasibly sit on top and and ride along the top, or is does that not seem possible? Yeah. Okay, so I will be, um, yeah, I'll so, go ahead uh, and try to... near the empty gun for, that has clearly been left open for Bam, Blood Bam, uh, there's actually a couple chairs there if you wanted to sit with him. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe somebody should keep an eye on him anyway. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I'll take one of those, those spots up at the top. Okay. Uh, anybody want to ride in my truck? You know, I got a coffee maker with back there and even coffee and uh, one coffee cup, but we can share that coffee cup. No problem. <laughs> it's a really big coffee cup. <laughs> 22 ounces. And oh, don't worry about it. There's also a restroom inside there. <laughs> Just kind Does of anybody want to join him in his mountaineer? No. <sighs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Victor. Like, yeah. no, absolutely oh, no, I'm, not. I'm, I'm trying to play the character obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of which, where would um, where would Silas like to be? Oh, you know Silas is on top. Uh, yeah, right. without question. There's yeah. some uh, good spots where they have like a, not like a balcony, but like a railing that you could yep. actually stand at if you want. Yep. Um, and, and the, uh, and the guy tells you, he's like, and by the way, I know it seems like it's going to be a really bumpy ride. Like I said, there is no obstacle that's going to stop this thing. It might actually be fairly smooth other than the hills. I'm just yeah. letting you know. Silas goes up to the railing and sort of leans forward and holds his arms out and goes, king of the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, where would you like to be, Rusty McLean? Um, I'd like to ask the nice gentleman if he happens to have a cot and a pillow. Yes, we do. Uh, and he, he tells you, would you like the one closest to where your glitter boy is? We can actually uh, pull in a cot if you want it in the squad bay with your, your glitter boy. That'd be excellent. I'd appreciate that. Okay, we can do that. And he gets you a rickety cot. He tell he tells somebody, "Got to take it right back to that that center squad bay." Num number 32. Well, that's better than the last one I had. <laughs> yeah, should you want better accommodations, we do have better rooms inside there that actually have nice beds that are fixed to the floor. Um, you if if you need something better, we can accommodate you. Oh, no, this is perfect. Might be hard to protect it if you're way in the in one of those yeah. rooms. Yeah, I'm, I'm not leaving my my baby alone. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Blood Bam, are you going to go to the uh, gun? Yeah, where can I put the bike? Can the, can I put the bike on top? You could put it on top. You could heck, you could strap it to the side of this turret if you want. <laughs> um, I'll have it to the side, but I, I um I'm going to find some ratchet straps and strap it on top. Perfect. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I look, and I, I'm not going to get in the turret, obviously, but this thing is going so slow, I may fall asleep. So I'm going to start, like, <laughs> jogging around the turret, like, making laps. All right. Yes, you can do that. So the whole time, Sasha, you just see him start running around in circles around you. Um. Oh, man, he's going to stress me out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, Silas, you're at the... 
at the railing. All right. Uh, and then Rusty O'Connell is driving himself. So that's everybody. Okay. So you guys are all stationed. Uh, Rusty O'Connell, you're given a walkie-talkie. Uh, you're all given walkie-talkies. Um, Rusty O'Connell, you hear uh, in yours, though, specifically, because uh, the rest of you, they, you're told you won't need it right now. You might need it a little later. Uh, but Rusty O'Connell, you hear departures in five minutes. And then over the loud PA... Five minutes too late. Let's go. Wait, wait, wait. wait no. <laughs> I was going to say, the rest of you here, either over your walkie-talkies or the PA, uh, departures in five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, five minutes is like hours for you over there. Uh, all right, so the time passes. And uh, you see a couple more people enter uh, while you guys are waiting. Uh, they look like just normal people. There's a couple people with different colored skin, like blue and green skin. You even see one guy with um, one arm that like goes down past his knee, uh, make his way on board, but he's got like this massive claw on that long arm. And uh, they get in. And uh, you hear the rumbling as this thing starts up. Um, and then it just goes silent, but there's this like hum to it. And all of a sudden it starts moving. And the, like the first jolt, you know, you kind of feel uh, almost throws you back if you're if you're not sitting. Um, Blood Bam, you're probably able to handle it no problem. Uh, because you're like mid movement anyway, uh, it might like take you a little bit off guard, but not enough to throw you off, right? And uh, you start moving. Now, you're you're driving for a couple hours. Like it's there's nothing really to see. It's just grassland and large trees, and um, occasionally you might see like a busted up, you know, old. Uh, tank or something that's been just mangled looks like it's been exploded um, but you're not seeing any forms of life or anything as this thing is just crunching over everything uh, making a lot of noise uh, on so, the so we've gone two hours already yes so the first minute we are taking off I already go to Sash say hey you, you want to go up there and check I got we got the codes you want to check the codes you want to go check that you want to go see what's going on like, what if I, we punch I, in three numbers do you think it will just sit and wait, um, and just come in well, and punch the third, you know fourth number and it'll go. I, I bet you there's an enter button. You know, like you have to push in all four and then enter. Yeah. Right? Oh. Don't you think so? Yeah. I don't I don't I don't think we should test it out. I think that's one of those things we should just, you know, we should wait. Right? Just Why wait? just 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 slow down. I, I feel like you you know what would be really good for you? <laughs> Meditation. Yeah. Blood band. <laughs> I, I just got a question for you. Why aren't you out scouting out front so you can be the first one into the action? It's a good idea, Rusty. It's a good idea. I'll think on that. Let me get, I got to get some more laps in. And then once I polish up uh, the bike, I'll take it out there. So how fast can you get that bike to go? Fast, faster than this uh, hunk of junk. Hey, hey, don't be insulting my truck. I'm not insulting the truck, I'm insulting this big whatever this thing we're sitting on is you know we probably might be able to get it to go faster i'm sure there's like some safety protocols we can just disconnect oh yeah it's probably a governor yeah get rid of the governor mm -hmm. um, yep. hey guys can you take this conversation off the walkie talkies please okay a lot, whole lot of chatter going on <laughs> yeah we want to want any radio signals to give us away are we there Sorry. yet are we there yet <laughs> are we there yet are we there yet <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> this goes on for hours. Yes, it uh, does. <laughs> so, uh, you guys notice after a couple hours, it's starting to get a little dark, um, and you can see uh, in the sky. It almost looks like the Northern Lights, but you guys are just probably breaking up into Michigan, um, and so I mean, the Northern Lights are not something you normally see. Uh, and it doesn't look like it's coming from the north. It looks like it's coming from the east uh, up in the sky, this translucent green and blue and uh, just waving around. Wow. And all of a sudden, you guys start here. Uh, anyone who's outside can hear screeching like. Ah! Ah! 
and you see these massive wings uh, to the east start flying down. Uh, they're about 15, fo- uh, 15 foot wingspan. And they start going after the e- the gunners on the east side of the mobile HQ. Uh, and you see uh, one guy tried to shoot at it <coughs> before these talons on the feet pierced him right through his chest. And he get lifted up, just dripping blood, and gets dropped behind the HQ. There's... Um, Sorry, one sec. There are... uh, How many are there? There are eight of them. As they fly in. What would you guys like to do? Run over and kill it. All right, let's uh, roll some initiative. What? What do, what do I roll for initiative? Just a d20, and uh, you should be good. Under your hand-to-hand combat on your character sheet, if you have a bonus, it'll say. Uh, but I I don't know if you do. I do. I'm going to get on the radio and say, hey, we're coming up on a ley line, so uh, keep an eye out. Okay. All right. What'd you get, Sasha, for initiative? Did you say? Did you type it or say it? What? Oh, are you talking to me? Yeah. What'd you get for initiative? I'm sorry. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. okay. Would you get uh, over there, Peter? Eleven. Eleven for Bam. Okay, what'd you get over there, Glitter Boy McConnell? Uh, McLean, I mean. A 17. Nice. Okay. And then what did you get out there, O'Connell? I got a six. Ooh. That's no good. And then last is Silas. I got a but, nine. Oh, you're not last, though. That's good. <laughs> All right, uh, real quick, because... Um, ri- or, Rifts does things a little differently. I need to know how many attacks per round you have. A round is 15 seconds. And so I just need to know. Uh, we'll start with you, Sasha. How many attacks I get? Yes. Um, One? No. Probably would have at least four. It should um, say around your hand. It should hand. be your, yeah, your H to H basic, like on page two, just below your character name. Mm-hmm. Like a paragraph below on page two, Paula. <coughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm, Sasha. Hers is a little different. She has spells first. I'm it's oh, like, okay. it's oh, the top of page uh, three for you. Oh, okay. oh, five. Attacks around. I'm sorry. Got it. Okay. Five. Okay. Okay. Bam, how many page. do you get? Seven. Makes sense. Damn juicers. Uh, McLean. Uh, four. Okay, and then you get more in your Glitter Boy, by the way. Mm-hmm. So if you look at your Glitter Boy, you'll need to know that. Um, and if you get into your Glitter Boy, you'll have to tell me how many actions you get then. Um, okay. O'Connell, how many actions you get? I got four. Four, and then Silas. Four. Okay. So there are going to be times I will probably skip you because I'm going to evenly space these out. Um, so everybody's going to get a chance to react on their first... Uh, on the first round, like the first turn, and then it's going to be spaced out. And then if you choose to do a defensive action, there's a chance you're going to lose your next actions. Uh, so first is McLean. So what would you like to do? Uh, you hear over your radio, uh, we got flying enemies flying in. It sounds like they're attacking the gunmen. You hear that over your walkie-talkie. Uh... Man, I was just getting some sleep. Ah. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. I guess I'm going to suit up. All right. So it will probably take, I would say, two actions to at least get into your, your suit. Mm-hmm. Um, probably would take longer, but we're just going to go with two because that's better. Uh, so you hop into your Glitter Boy. Uh, and start powering it up. And 
That was six attacks. Six for, in there? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, next up would be Sasha. What would you like to do? You just saw some guy get impaled by some talons. You're muted, Sasha. Lovely. Okay, so how many of them are there? There are eight? Yes. Okay, um, so <clears throat> Sasha, standing on top of this, you know, mobile unit, these things coming, flying around, she, she actually um, is going to create are, are there any of them that are close to her or coming close to her um it doesn't look like it they're all attacking the east side uh you guys are almost dead center of the back of this thing uh so you're about uh i would say like 50 yards away from where they even are oh okay then she's actually just gonna head um towards them a little okay. bit to try and get a little bit closer. Okay. Yep. You can do that. All right. So you move and then uh, as you start moving closer, you see the other, uh, the one that just dropped the guy starts flying back towards that turret. Uh, and the other ones are starting to like rip at the, like the, the control panel of it. Uh, and they're just ripping the machinery out. Like all of them are right there, just ripping and throwing it up in the air. Like anything they, they take out. You see one of them kind of shocks itself and like composes itself. Uh, but that's what they spend the whole turn doing, their, their whole first action doing. Uh, next up is Bam. Uh, can I get there? In, can I get there in one turn, 50 yards? Can I run up to one and punch What's it? What's your speed? Uh oh, speed sixty eight. Yeah, SPD sixty eight. That's all right. Yeah, that's a glitter or a G -star. Yeah, you could probably get there. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to do that then. Okay. So, uh, is that enough to attack or? Yeah, go ahead. You can move and attack. Okay, so if I do a power punch, that means I only get to do two in a turn, as opposed to doing seven attacks. I just do two, right? Uh, power punch uses how many actions? Two or it two. It says two attacks. So does that mean yeah. two out of my seven? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna run up and give him a power punch. Okay. Uh, D20, right? Yep. Uh, 18 to hit. So when you do that, uh, the one that you try to hit is actually going to uh, strike at the same time back at you. So what did you get to hit? Uh, I got 18. Okay, so you're going to hit. Roll your damage. Okay. Uh, and yeah. you're going to also take an attack back at the same time. Six. That's uh, 14 MDC. Okay. Uh, so it strikes back at you, dealing five MDC across your chest. Uh, what does it look like as it scratches you open and you kill it? Uh, it scratches me, I laugh, and punch it, and it head, like, spins around and almost, like, pops off, and it just collapses. <laughs> <laughs> so it, like, falls off the turret and starts rolling off the side of this mobile. Yeah, and it rolls screen. under this thing and goes crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Silas, uh, so you see uh, about 40 yards, or about 30 yards from where you are, um, you see all this happening. So am I above them? Am I on the same level You're with them? You're on the them? same level on top with like railing. Okay. So, uh, da, 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 da. and there, there's seven left now. I, I'm going to, can I, can I move forward and still fire? Yes. Okay. You can't so... do an aim shot if you're doing that though. It would be a normal shot. Okay, I want to move, but I want to move forward. I want to get, uh, I want to get closer. You know, yep. uh, up close and personal. Uh, so, how would I be able to make it? Like the thirty yards? 
Uh, what's your speed? Uh, b- b- my speed is 19 miles per hour. Okay. So, yeah, you could do it. Okay. So, I, I move forward. I take a shot uh, at the closest one uh, to me. Okay. And that's going to be... Uh, How close did you want to get when you do that? I want to be right up in the middle. My my I like I think my ultimate plan here is to mount one of these bad boys. <laughs> like, so uh, so I want could, I mean I want to be right up you there. You can completely so. close the distance if you want. Okay. Uh so I want to completely close the distance. I'm going to take a shot at one and it's that's uh an 18. I, am I right? Like on that I rolled a 10. I'm I have a plus 8 on uh on my handgun. Yeah, that's Does that sound right? Okay. Yeah, uh, right. So it is going to spend its action to try and dodge the gunshot. Okay. Uh, because it's a gunshot, it's got a penalty. It misses. So it is unable to dodge it. In fact, you see it, tr- like, as you pull your gun up, it sees you and locks eyes like yep. a deer in headlights and pauses for a second. And then it tries to, like, I would say leap, but it gets shot. Uh, what was the damage, by the way? Uh, for 46 to SDC, you got to tell me okay. what the hell the, explain to me SDC versus MDC yep. so real MDC, quick one more time. So, okay. Um, MDC is like any magical creatures would have oh, MDC. Okay. Uh, an SDC weapon won't penetrate the skin of an MDC. It's like if you tried to attack a dragon with a toothpick, it wouldn't got do it. shit. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Same so... thing with like if you shot a tank. So SDC weapons are like your normal 22 caliber, any kind of regular bullet. Whereas MDC might be like a laser pistol or something. Got it, got it. So damage was uh, 17 then. Okay, so you see it's like goes to dodge. It does not dodge out of the way, but you see your bullet ricochet off of it. Uh, it okay. just like bounces off, doesn't seem to wound this creature. And it like, as it like is on the ground, it looks up, see, up at you and like snarls at you and leaps forward. Um, okay. But it's not his turn. It is now O'Connell's turn. So you see all this flying ahead of you and you're in your mountaineer. What would you like to do? Uh, the guy who got grabbed and dropped on the ground, is yes. is it clearly he's dead? Oh yeah, his chest was punctured. He's not even wearing armor. He's just okay. wearing like clothes. And you could have saw as he was picked up, the talons were embedded through his chest. Picked him up and dropped him, and he bounced, like, from, again, this is a multi-story high thing, too. All right. The reason I asked, I want to see if I want to check to see if he was still alive, but it looks like he's probably dead. Um, I I do have a question here. I'm going to make the assumption on my Jeep or on my truck, I have outside speakers? Yes, that's fine. Okay. I'm going to pick a random song, let's say, um, Rock Lobster, and just crank it up to 12 and turn it on. All right. So you start playing, blasting this music. Yes. Very <laughs> irritating music. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Um, and honking the horn too. I love it. Okay. So, uh, bam, uh, you did a power punch, so you don't get an action now. So that's your two actions. <coughs> it is now Sasha's turn next. Um, what would you like to do? All right, so now that she is a little bit closer to these creatures, I assume that we're, like, the terrain around us, there are some sorts of, like, plants, trees, Large something, trees, yep. Somewhere. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so without getting too close um, to any of these creatures, though, um, Sasha will begin to kind of move her her arms around, um, and you'll see that a, a huge a huge chunk of one of the trees breaks off and just goes hurling straight towards one of these um, flying creatures. Okay. So I'm just gonna hurl the tree limb at them. Okay, and uh, just a regular tree limb. Now, does that give you magical MDC? Do you know? Um, it is. I'm assuming it is because you. Yeah, it's 3d6 MD. MDC? Yeah. It just says MD. MD is mega damage. So it's the same Mega damage. damage. Okay. Uh, so, uh, roll the hit. Oh. Um, 18. Okay. 
and it will not make it. So uh, you hit this thing with this branch. Roll your damage. Um, that is 11. That's and right. it needs to also roll a percentile because there's a chance that it's completely knocked down. Uh, it is completely knocked down as its body oh. goes lifeless. Oh, okay. You, s- well- you crush the avian bones of this creature pretty effortlessly um, with this branch. Um, And you see it just go limp and start rolling off the side of this mobile HQ. I like that. All right. Uh, Next is Bam, though. Or wait, no. Next. Oh, no, yeah, it is Bam. Okay. Bam, you are next. So clarification on the damage that I took five MDC, right? Does that come off the armor that I'm wearing? Yes, because it slashed okay. your chest. Uh, okay. Are you wearing a helmet as well? Uh, yeah. Okay, yep. So uh, I will tell you, uh, your armor should say which parts have certain MDC. Yes, yes, it does. Okay. okay. So I'll tell you where you're hit, and you'll have to take the MDC off. Gotcha, MDC okay. So, so yeah, so um, uh, so this, is, this isn't this is good because my uh, jacket was also slashed, which has sponsors on there, and now the sponsors <laughs> have been damaged. This is not good. So where is the next one of these little bastards? Yeah, they're like all right there pretty much. Okay, the yeah, turret. the same deal. I'm going to just run up to one and punch. There's six Rock of them lobster. still. Favorite song, too. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> down, 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 down. All right. I'm going to do another one of these power punches. That's a uh, dirty 20. All right, so it's going to use two actions. Uh, you're going to hit it. Uh, it's going to – actually, it's going to try to parry. Uh you said dirty 20? You got it. Yep. Okay. These things are not very good in combat, you've noticed. All right. It They're will slow. take uh, 19 uh, MDC. All right. So what's that look like? So uh, as I am uh, humming the the joyous tunes of B-52's Rock Lobster, <laughs> I just run up and hit this guy right in the gut, and uh, you hear the bones and crack and his whatever organs and he, he has in there burst and whatever other things that should be working are not working and he just flops to the ground and I boot him off and he ro- falls on the ground he gets rolled over <laughs> beautiful all right uh, next up is Silas again okay uh, I am in the thick of the fray at this point right yes in okay. fact this happened right next to you you saw him punch the one right next to you Okay, so uh, I am going. I am going to try to jump on the back of one of these things. I'm going to try to mount one of these things. <laughs> Love it. Um, like, what would my a? How many actions would that take? And b, one. what would I roll against that? So uh, I'm going to use the entangle. Do you have a bonus to entangle on your hand to hand? Probably not. I do not. No. Okay, uh, I'm going to do an opposed roll. So just okay. roll a straight D twenty. Well, I don't. I don't see entangle in my hand to hand. I then have. You don't have it. Yeah. Okay. Just roll. Okay. Yep. Most people don't have it. So. Okay. So uh, uh, a D twenty roll. Yeah, I got a fourteen. And I have a six. So okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> so you go to jump on it, and this thing's wings are just big and awkward, and it turns around as you do that, and it kind of tosses you to the side. Uh, you're still on your feet, uh, but maybe a little bit off balance, but nothing too bad. Okay. And, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. So, Beth, do I still have any other actions or no? Technically, no. That would be the okay. action. Got it, got it. Okay, yep, yep. All right, O'Connell. Okay. You are um, in your, you're in your thing humming along. Right. Uh, the special feature I took on this um, ATV was flight. Okay. Fly. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the flying system and try to crash into one in midair. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll hit it with the bright lights too because it's daytime. That would disorient it. Okay. Uh, so it's going to take – how fast can you fly? 35 miles an hour. Okay. So the mobile HQ is going about 60. So it will be hard for you to catch up. Um, to flash your light – you could flash your lights and try yeah. to – are you trying to disorient it with your lights too? Uh, I didn't realize it was going so fast. So I'm going to try to speed up and get in front of the – Mobile headquarters. Right. And, then I'm, and then on my next action, fly and come back towards it. Okay. 
you could do that. So uh, give me a driving check because you're going to be trying to dodge trees and things like that that are along the side. Um, All right. And I would say at like a negative 15 penalty. 15? All right. Nope. How bad was it? Uh, negative. It would have been uh, like about, I missed by 20 ish. Cause okay. I have. So, so you go to go around and you hit this large bump and you nail the side of your truck against, um, a couple trees, more than one. Uh, your car is going to take, uh, 50, uh, damage to the side. Okay. Mm. No problem, no problem. I got Bondo. We can fix that. No problem. That's all right. <laughs> oh, so you guys man. See this, this giant three wheeled, like, U haul armored truck, go, like, s- driving around the side about 80 miles per hour, like, hit a couple trees and, like, almost lose it as it hits, like, a like a divot. And then it's like, oh, never mind. Oh, all crap. Right. I hit a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Sasha that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm already feeling bad about the tree that I ripped apart, you know. <laughs> right. It is McLean's turn, finally. Yeah, I'm just getting her warmed up, guys. I'm ready to come out the gate. So you got uh, the hatch opens immediately down, uh, and you are able to get going in your glitter boy. It's about 50, uh, it's about a one-eighth of a mile east and on top of this thing from where you're at. All right. Um, How fast does your glitter boy go? Uh, is that considered a vehicle speed in it? Yeah. Um, it says zero, but I don't know if that's right or not. Let me pull it. Uh, up. Um, to find it. Uh, oh no! Here it goes. Sixty miles an hour. Sixty miles per hour. Okay, so yeah, uh, you. I would say it would take to close the distance if you wanted to, or you could just climb up on top. Uh, and try to hit it there because your range on your weapons is pretty good as well yeah. in your vehicle. So you have some options depending on what you would like to do. Um, yeah, we'll do that. We'll climb up on top. Okay. So uh, when you do so, you it's there's not necessarily a clear shot because you got friendlies right there, uh, but you could shoot if you wanted to. Mm. Yeah, sure. We'll <laughs> All right. Awesome. I love it. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll arm up that rail gun. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Let's go for it. So the rail gun. 3D6 times 100. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. 3D6 uh, times 10, I think. Yep, yeah. 3D6 times 10 for the damage. To hit, I think you're a plus two. Yeah, that would be the strike. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what it would be. Okay. And then if you wanted to do an aim shot, that would take two actions. Um, but you would have a plus two on top of the plus two. Um, no, that actually wouldn't be a bad idea considering we got friendlies on top. We'll do that. Okay. All right, so two actions. All right, roll to hit. Two. Um, uh, so you said an additional plus two? Yes. It's uh, plus four total. That'd be seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't hit. Uh, so you, you like aim it and everything and the thrusters go on in the back of your glitter boy suit as you go to shoot. And the reason, cause the force of this cannon basically would have blew you backwards. So you yeah. see like these jet thrusters go on on the back of this glitter boy the the heat and the fire go shooting out and this loud roaring comes and this uh gun that his glitter boy shoots uh sends just a blast of of ammunition uh to the point where you guys who are over there in combat can feel the heat even though it's not anywhere near you you feel it blow right by you um and it's a little intimidating. Uh, does not hit anything, though. <laughs> it just goes off into the night. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry about I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm just getting this thing warmed up. Uh, just <laughs> give me a little bit. 
<laughs> I love it. All right, Bam. Or actually, I'm sorry, not Bam. Uh, it is Sasha's turn again. Um, so Sasha is actually, you know, like I said, she's kind of feeling a little bad about the tree that she destroyed. Um, so she's going to opt this round to just, uh, she's going to go up and she's going to uh, punch it in the face. All right. Uh, roll the strike. Um, so I'm going to use a power punch. So okay. that's two um, attacks, just so you know. Um, a 13. To hit? Yeah. Right, we'll do it. Cool. If, as long as it's unopposed, you only have to do a four on your roll to hit in hand to hand. Oh, wow. Okay. Because of the active defense, they can choose to dodge or parry if they want. Actually, okay. they are going to parry. So that, yeah, it wasn't good enough anyway. So that is 13 SCC. Yeah, you, yeah, what's that look like? Um, so Sasha comes running kind of through the fray, um, and she she gets off this this pretty good leap, and she's able to um, as she comes down, she she just clobbers one of these things um, right in the face. Okay. And lands in a perfect, you know. Three point decision. <laughs> heroes, heroes dance. <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. I love it. Okay. So when you hit one, uh, another one comes right back at you. Uh, it is going to try to uh, claw you. Uh, are you wanting to spend a future action to do a dodge? Or you can, I think you're trained, so you can do a parry with at no cost. Uh, using your parry bonus. Do you want to try and oppose um, the claw? I'll go ahead and do it. I'll do a parry. Okay, roll a d20. By the way, I got a 10. Ooh, I got a 17. So this claw is coming at you uh, at your lower stomach area, and then you block it out of the way. Uh, Silas, uh, the one that you had... Uh, tried to climb on, is now going to come right back at you. It is also going to try and claw you. Uh, you have the option to parry it or simultaneously attack or, I mean, there's a lot so of options. Here, so I I do have entangle, right? It says I can I can pin or ensnare an attacker's arm or hand, not the weapon itself. It costs my next action, right? Um, yes. But the entangled opponent must make an opposed dodge roll to get free. So as it swing as it's swinging at me with this claw, can I entangle? Can I entangle its claw, like its clawed yeah. hand, and still take a shot at it, or no? Yeah, uh, not no. Uh, yeah, that would be a separate action. So the entangle will cost your action. Yep. Um, you'll you'll have to beat my attack roll to do it. Yep. Otherwise, you're going to take the damage. So I rolled an eighteen. Okay. Uh, 12. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. So the claw comes at you, uh, and it's going to hit your arm, the one you were trying to entangle it with, yep. uh, for three MDC damage. Now, do you have armor on? Uh, I do. I have... So you'll have to take uh, the MDC off your arm. Armor. Off my arm. Okay, yep. got it. And right. how many points of damage was it? Uh, three. Wasn't okay. a ton. Okay. Uh, and then, bam... Uh, you are going to be attacked by a third one. Okay. So uh, I have auto. I have auto dodge. So what does that mean? I roll. So uh, no matter what, it'll be a twenty, whether you want to parry it or dodge. Um, so it is a twelve to hit, and you would have to dodge that number. So you have to roll a twenty with your either dodge or parry number, and it's going for your leg. Okay. Do. Uh... Do I, if I have a dodge bonus, do I add it? Yes. Know? Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's 18 on the die, and I have plus seven dodge, 25. Yeah, you uh, definitely dodge it. So you like do this like weird, flippy, like dodge out of the way, and this creature like dives at your leg and is left like down on the ground. Uh, and it kind of gets back up and looks over at you. Uh, the other one, there's another one that takes flight and starts flying towards the glitter boy that just shot. 
It will not get there this turn, though. And with that, that was their turn. Next up is... Bam! Followed by Silas and then O'Connell. Okay, so this time I'm just going to do a normal kick on the one that just attacked me. Okay. Uh, 19 to hit. Okay. He's going to parry. I got a 21, so he actually parries you. Knocking your leg out of the way. Um, It's almost like its movement from before just kind of flowed right into it, because otherwise it wouldn't have been able to keep up with your kick, probably. All right. And, uh, yeah, next up is Silas. So Silas is uh, frustrated as hell trying to uh, hand-to-hand with these things and thinks to himself, you know, why not uh, just do what he's best at? I um, So when it says I have four attacks, does that mean I can take four shots? No, no. so when we did uh, initiative... Yep. I organized uh, the the action sequence in a yep. fifteen point grid. Now okay. you could so right now you have two more actions of your okay. four. You could do an action that's going to spend both of yours though, and then you have nothing again until we reset. So can I take an aimed shot then, uh, which yes. would cost two two? Okay, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna take an aimed shot at the uh, at the um, the thing that just attacked me basically just scratched me uh and so that's a plus that's a plus two yes on top of your already on top right so yeah right exactly so that is uh that's a 20 it's a 28 no that's a that's a 21 Uh, so like a yeah i was gonna say dirty 20 but it's 21 yeah yep uh which one are you shooting at the one that was just engaged with you yeah yeah okay uh and then what was the damage and damage type so the it's SDC damage. The damage is the damage is uh, the damage is twenty. Okay, so you shoot it with what, what caliber round is it? Uh, it's a three fifty seven magnum. Okay, so you just hold your gun out and go pow, and when you shoot it, uh, you're like five feet away from this thing, and you see like this, and you see a feather fall off, but you don't see any blood come out of this thing whatsoever. Okay. Um, and it like the the impact of it does blow its arm back, but it does it just gets angry. Okay. It's it's just infuriating it more. Uh, and next up is O'Connell. So you want to try to drive around again? Yes, but I want to use um telemechanics. Okay. To drive that bump me from a fifty-five up to an eighty. Okay. Uh, do I still have the minus 10%? Yeah, the same penalty. Yep. Okay. Yep, still crash. <laughs> All right, so you take another... Oh, wow. Uh, you take another 40 points Okay. of MDC from this yep. tree that you just smash into. Yeah. So you guys hear this loud, like, bang! Coming from the side, like, of this of the mobile HQ. Uh, You can't see it from your vantage point because you guys are so high up uh, and it's darker, but you definitely hear it. It's loud. And uh, we are now up to Sasha's turn. You have two Um, more actions. So I have two more actions left? Yeah. Okay, so I I will try and power punch another one of these things how many of them left are there there's four one is currently engaged with you okay all right so i will go ahead and try and power punch this one that i am engaged with okay and you know sash has done a lot of great things you guys but this one (laughs) This round, it's just not her, it's not her time to shine. What'd you get? She rolled a two. With your bonus, that's a two still? Um. To strike? I have, I I don't have a bonus to strike. I just have uh, extra damage. Okay. All right. So you missed then, wildly. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna rub the dice god's head for you, Paula. This is for your next it's for your next one. So yeah. I love it. <laughs> now I, I don't want to sound like a rules lawyer, but yep. in play in palladium, one through four, when you roll that on the dice, always misses. Yep. Yeah. We, so. Uh McLean, it is your turn. All right. Um how close am I to one? Would you say so? The ones flying at you, uh, okay, probably fairly close at this point. If you wanted to engage it, yeah, um, if it's close enough, do like a leaping kick at it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could do that. You could yeah. do any hand to hand stuff in a glitter boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. By the way, glitter boys are only like 12 feet. I think I said 20 feet before, yeah, it doesn't matter though, <laughs> they're big. Yeah. <laughs> creative creative license you're right yeah this is a go. custom one <laughs> yeah i am iron man oh yeah we'll do that so that would be a considered to still strike then yeah still add your yeah. strike okay and then i should actually have some of your hand-to-hand -hand stuff as a glitter boy on your um shoes. yeah i'm looking at it right now like so a stomp full speed yeah. ram yeah. Leap kick, uh, 46 damage, but it'd be your strike bonus, yep. Okay. Yeah. And we'll it's MDC go. damage for all of it. Okay. And in the Glitter Boy, you do have one additional attack. Yeah, we I got it down as six okay. for him right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a 22. All right. So you go to do that. It does try to parry you. It does not, which, I mean, it's a Glitter Boy with like a 50 strength, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it like goes to block it and you just blow right through it with your foot. Uh, roll damage. Uh, uh, 14. So what's that like when you kill it? Just as I go to take off, thrusters pushing me right up. I'll take that big old foot and I'll just jam it right through its chest. And just slam it right back to the ground. And you hear this thundering stomp and just blood and guts everywhere. <laughs> Looks like you just squash a bug. Yeah, pretty much. Awesome. Uh, bam. You have two actions left. All right, still fighting this one in front of me, right? So yep. I'm going to try to attack it. It's a regular attack. There's only three left, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah, that's four. So that would be a miss. Okay. Uh, all right, McLean, it is your turn. Last turn of the round for you. McLean or Aquano? McLean. Okay. Oh, is it McLean? Oh. Yep. So now I'm starting to get in the rust. Yeah, Some people rusty. have used like two actions. And it, it throws off the whole initiative yeah. order. Yeah. Like, that's one of the hard things about this. Yeah. So that's why I had to uh, make like a grid. It's the McLean and O'Connell, and they're both rusty, so that's driving me nuts. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, you, did, you did copy my name. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're just in sync with each other. Yeah, yeah you're related. <laughs> <laughs> we're, di we're distant cousins, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Next up is Bam, by the way. O'Connell gets the last action. O'Connell or McLean? So we go McLean, Bam, and then O'Connell. Okay. Uh, so, uh, all right. So I'm, I guess I'm off the transport now. I take it. No, you're still up there. Am I still up there? Okay. Yeah, you're still on top. All right. Um, is any more around close or uh the closest one so the rest are about i would say a good 30 yards away you could close the distance though and one is engaged with silas one is engaged with sasha and one is engaged with bam right now okay um uh, and you see silas has ricocheted a bullet off of it in fact you probably just saw that uh, mm -hmm. Sasha just swung and missed, and Bam just swung and missed at one. All right. Uh, I'll uh, shoot. Well, I got three. Uh, I got a couple options here. Uh, 
All right. I'll try to head the one off for Silas. Okay. Uh, close the gap in on that. I'll maybe like a running punch or something. Okay, go for it. All right. You could do the running ram thing. For the running ram? Yeah. Oh, the full speed. I think that's normally two actions, but the, I'll allow the, this one. Oh, the full speed ram? Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, you could pay the action in the next melee, too. Yeah. I'll just go with it as it is. I like, okay. you know, I, I kind of like letting them use it as one. All right. Uh, 16. That is going to miss. So which one were you going Whoa. at? The one with silence, uh, you said? Yeah. So you kind of charge up on it, and it, uh, like, flutters out of the way and, like, parries your your ram uh which uh would be very hard but it kind of like spins around it you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and it misses and that is your turn it is bam's turn uh same thing i'll try to hit it again mm -hmm. oh that's a three damn I'm start i feel like i'm getting tired and I are these the and shiny grab. math rocks no and, oh you uh, might need to switch back to those man I bust out an energy drink, one of my four five uh, ones. I'm, I think I'm crashing. This isn't good. <laughs> You're gonna have to hit the uh, morphine button. I mean the speed button again. <laughs> Up your your drug drug content. Yep. <laughs> O'Connell, it's your turn. So uh, as I'm crashing through the woods, uh, killing a lot of wildlife and old growth forest, have I stayed even with the transport, or have I managed? Yeah, to Yeah, you're ahead just of it? side swiping trees. You're not making any ground to get in front of it, though, unfortunately. And or this thing. I... So even when you get next to it, yeah, this thing is about one eighth mile deep for you to get if, past it. If I look up, are there any um, these flying pterodactyl things up there? Uh, you don't see any flying, no. Okay. Well, I'm going to try again front of the thing again. Okay. And it was minus 15 or minus 10? Uh, whatever you choose right now. I don't remember. I think it was 15. Okay. Good luck. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> 64. Is that good I made. I made it by like 1% or point. All right. So you're able to pull alongside and gain some ground. Well, I want to get in front of it, so. Yeah, it's going to take probably another, I mean, to pass something. You're going 80. It's going 60. It's going to take, I would say, at least a half a round to get it in front of it. Okay. Um, that's probably being generous mathematically, but I don't care. Uh, yeah, it would take about that to get positioned in front of it to do your thing. Uh, but if you want, we can assume that success on the actions for half the round to do it. So next, so we'll skip your turn on that roll for the next couple. And then once we get to your initiative order in the next round, you can do your flying thing. Does that make sense? Well, well I got four actions. I think I just did the fourth action. You did in this round. In the next yeah. round, it's going to take you half of a round. So I'm okay. saying instead of get, making you roll for driving or whatever two more times... That'd be safe. Yeah, that'd be kind of safe and cautious. I mean, we can make it roll. I just figured I'd give you the success. You could. Okay, put... I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be difficult, you <laughs> if you want to roll, I'll I'll come to you next time. No, no, no. That's okay. We'll be safe and cautious. <laughs> I think I scratched the paint on the side a little bit. <laughs> All right, All right just everybody, roll initiative again. Hmm. All right. I have a seven. Sasha, what'd you get? A ten. Ten. Okay, bam. Eleven. Perfect. McLean. Five. O'Connell. Nineteen! There you go. Silas. <laughs> Two. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> All right. So, first up is O'Connell. We will skip you for the sake of this. All right. We'll skip your next. Uh, and then it is now up to bam. You got one engaged with you, buddy. Yep. So it's everything it is reset, reset, right? Yep. Everything reset. All right. Power punch. Okay. Beat a 19. Up. Okay. Uh, I did parries. not. All right. I did so not. this screeching squawking bird thing with its claws, uh, actually parries you, uh, really well. It's starting to feel very confident 
as you've missed a few times and it's parried you a couple times. And it is now over to Sasha. Yeah, um, she is also going to try and power punch the one that is on her. Okay. It will try to parry you. I have a 17. I, you know, she's really trying, but it's just not coming up Sasha right now. <laughs> she got a nine. Yeah, no good. All right. Next up is mine. Okay, cool. So first one on Silas is going to attack. Uh, I have a 20, dirty 20. So uh, I can dodge or parry, correct? Yes, dodging will cost your next action though as well. All so right. parrying, I... because it's engaged, you can do free as long okay. as you're trained. So I will parry. Expert base, uh, not basic. Uh, that's a five, so uh, okay. yeah. So it does that. strike through. Uh, it does hit you. So it claws, it actually like claws at you with its talon. As you try to like move out of the way, it actually scratches you down your leg with its talon. Uh, the next one over on Sasha. Wait, doing how much damage though? Oh, sorry. One, one okay. MDC. Yep. Uh, oh my gosh. I got bad news for you, Sasha. I crit. I'm going to. Harry. <laughs> hey, there's a 5% chance you could do it. Yeah, go ahead. Roll the parry. Did you get a 20? You know, like I said, it's not really coming up with Sasha right now. <laughs> so the, the worst news is Sasha does not have any MDC armor. So she, she's just SDC. So, uh, she takes this SOL basically <laughs> so this claw RIP like slashes through her like legit like through her like the guy before that it embedded through its chest it basically does the same thing through her stomach and the whole like everything gets ripped out of her what did Sasha have for lunch today <laughs> <laughs> She, she ate the earth, remember? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you guys see a bunch of leaves. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, and no Sasha's way. body goes lifeless. Her eyes wide open, and it's just looking over at Bam right in the face as she's dead. Unsalvageable. With Seriously? That, like, okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's MDC to SDC. <laughs> now, bam. Yeah, I didn't realize that they did, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Paula. I tried to message it's you. okay. I know. Well, you said that, but I thought that was just like an FYI, not that that's, <laughs> you know, the type of damage that they do. You just said, just so you know, you don't have MDC armor. Great. Uh, right. I mean, right? The lights didn't go off and everything. Yeah, well, I mean, because I, you get I hit, have you a... don't have MDC armor. One, oh, I didn't finish my second sentence. I said I wrote <laughs> one MDC damage. I meant to write one MDC damage will kill you. <laughs> oh yeah, I I didn't really realize that because I do have an armor ability. It's fine. It's all oh, good. Like a spell, right? Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> so I just sent you a new message. I know. Uh, okay, so bam, uh, this other one, now that you like see uh, her eyes lock with yours, uh, <laughs> this other one strikes at you uh, with a claw right at your lower abdomen as well. Mm. What would, are you going to do? Uh, auto dodge. All right, got to be an eight. Uh, 14. <laughs> so you dodge out of the way. <coughs> Sorry. Sucks to suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I mean, I don't, but I do. It's a one shot, right? <laughs> be playing it is your turn. Oh, God. I mean, you wouldn't have been any nicer if it wasn't a one shot. So <laughs> I don't know why you're saying it. Like, the you're fact so... you know that just it means so much to me. I appreciate it. <laughs> 
<laughs> that means I'm a great DM. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think me and the, the old Rusty are fair and the best right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. I'm a, I'm a little peeved here, and I'm going to – about getting uh, parried. So I'm going to strike that one again. All right. Uh, all right, let's see if we can go kick it or something. Uh, Lord. All right, uh, that's a nine. That's good enough. I rolled a three. So oh, uh, roll your damage. Sweet. All right. Uh, six. Okay, so you hit it. Uh, it is still standing. Uh, you actually probably break its arm when you hit it. Uh, and you can see its arm as it tried to parry. You hit it, and it just swings the opposite direction it should, and it's clearly broken. And it's like, Rah! Sweet. Uh, and it is now Silas's turn. I have a question. Um, can I... How do I... So I want to pull my C12 heavy assault laser rifle as yeah. opposed to my, like, does that cost an action? How do I do that? You can do it. I, I'm going to hand wave it. Okay. So Silas is clearly um, his, you know, ballistic weapons aren't working very well. So he pulls out his C12 heavy assault laser rifle and does a three round burst at the, uh, at, at um, one of these harpy creatures. Okay. Uh, I think that's like three actions or two actions. I mean, uh, it is. Here's burst. what I have. C12 heavy assault laser rifle. Three round burst is a minus two to hit. It doesn't oh. say how many actions it oh. is. A burst is still one action. Is it still one? Okay. It's yeah. just the negative. Okay, cool. Right. And so I rolled uh 17. Yeah, that hits it. Okay. So Roll some damage. That, that is 66. And this is MDC, not SDC. Yep. And this is the one that just got its arm broken, by the way. Got it. That is 11, 14, 18, 20, 24 points of damage. You obliterate it. You just light it up. Uh, describe what that looks like. So uh, Silas, completely frustrated at the fact that his old faithful just seems to be bouncing off these things kind of pulls his laser rifle off of his back like lines up the sight and just explodes this thing's head like literally three shot three three round bursts um straight to the straight to the melon and it just pops uh with feathers sort of like flying in the wind uh all around him awesome hey, you're you're gonna watch this thing <laughs> <laughs> all right so you see uh Running from one of the turrets that can't apparently swing around enough uh, to point backwards from the front, uh, you see this character running uh, into the fray. Paula, what is um, your character's name? So uh, <clears throat> my new character's name is Jax, and um, <laughs> she is she is heavily equipped. She is wearing full body armor. <laughs> um, she. Who the thunk it? <laughs> she has. She has she... an electric blue mohawk, and yes. she is running straight for these things. Um, she pulls out um, an AK forty seven and starts to shoot at them. All right. Roll to hit. There's one that's not engaged with people right now. It's well, standing that, over the lifeless body of Sasha. That seems like the the prime one to hit because, <laughs> you know, Jax thinks you do that a burst? Sasha was super cool. Like she really didn't have a chance to shine, <laughs> and so she wants to she wants to avenge her death, and she rolls a twenty one to All right. hit. Pow, 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 pow. And it's so, SDC, correct? Um, it sure is. Okay. 12 points of damage. So you hit, but uh, it doesn't seem to do much as the bullets just are pinging off of its skin. You see it's being hit, but it's not breaking skin. And it's just looking at you and squawks at you and starts making a movement towards you. 
All right, she's running towards it, full force, just screaming bloody murder. Bam! You see this new one, new person enter the fray. All right. (laughs) I'm still fighting this other one? Yep, you're still engaged. Okay. Miss, 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 miss. Yeah, I know. It's going to parry. All right, so I'll attempt to just punch it. Regular regular style. Uh, 17. Hits. And that would be... 17 MDC. Uh, yeah, what's it like as you kill it? Uh, I just sweep the leg <laughs> and it goes flying in the air and lands on its head and you hear its neck crack. Love it. All right. Uh, that was your turn. And it is now... O'Connell's turn. Oh, no. We were skipping that because we are going to do the success. So that makes it Bam's turn again. So I see this other one like, get shot a bunch of times and not go down. Yes. I'll run over to it. Attack it. Okay. Something for you. Uh, 18 total. Oh, you hit. 16 okay. MDC. Yeah, you kill this one too. What's that look like? I just run and then flying elbow and it goes it hits it it hits it right in the mouth and you hear all the teeth crack and they go flying. Awesome. And it punch its uh, nose up into its uh, brain and it drops dead. <laughs> so you guys are uh, standing on top of the deck here. Uh, all of them are dead. The vehicle's humming along. Uh, O'Connell, you finally get out in front. Okay. Uh, you still want to fly it up on top? Yep, yeah, going to fly up on top, swip upside down, <laughs> honking a horn and looking for things to hit. <laughs> He's Enemies. shining lights and everything, like this bright yep. spotlight mm-hmm. of headlights is shining on you guys. Yep. Rock you lobster. Nothing but- Rock's lobster. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and <it> is- <laughs> You hear loud music glaring through the woods. But, but it sounds like a different version because one of the speakers is blown, so it's like built-in <laughs> distortion. It's like, oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's another, sp- there's another speaker just hanging by the wires flying behind it. <laughs> it's like duct tape together. Uh, yeah, so you don't see anything uh, other than a bunch of dead harpies. You see a glitter boy standing, o- like, standing over a couple dead harpies. Uh, or I'm sorry, dead winged creatures. Uh, and then you see uh, the juicer, bam. You see a couple of mercenaries, that, uh, gunslinger that you saw in this new like mercenary that you haven't seen before uh, with a large gun just like running towards the, the dead herpes. All right. I'm going to crank up on the radio. It's like, hey, I'm going to go uh, fly some air covers, see if there's any more things coming on in. Uh, everybody stay sharp. And uh, if you find like a section of paneling, can you pick it up for me, please? <laughs> you know what his vehicle reminds me of is all I can think about is in space balls. Yes. <laughs> the- <laughs> the That's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's what That's- I'm thinking too. That's all I can think about. Oh, awesome. okay. All right. So it's, uh, Sasha is dead, dead. Oh, yeah. Her. her- Every, all of her innards are everywhere. <laughs> um, so Jax is going to go up um, and, and grab the radio off of Sasha's dead body. Oh, Jax probably has her own. All the gunners oh, okay. probably have one. Oh, okay. It's a radio back and forth with the, uh, the, the drivers, the pilots. So uh, I grab the radio. You can grab Sasha's. Uh, with that... You guys are regaining your composure, reloading your weapons, uh, if you have SDC weapons. Uh, anything with an E-clip doesn't need to be reloaded unless you used all the, the charges, pretty much. And uh, with that, we will take a quick break, and we will be back in a few moments. All right.
All right, we are back, and the mobile HQ has made its way into Michigan. Uh, oh. You are almost at the halfway point when you guys hear over the PA system. Uh, we will be arriving at the fueling station in just a few moments. Passengers are to remain inside of their rooms and not open their windows. I repeat, passengers are to stay inside their rooms and not peer out of their windows. And that is announced over the PA. So any of you uh, who are on the vehicle uh, will hear that, uh, but you would know that is not directed at you. Uh, if you are in your own vehicle with a walkie-talkie, you do not hear that. Um, now, over the walkie-talkie, you would then hear, all right, guys, we're about to end up at the fueling station. Uh, be careful. We There have been coalition soldiers spotted at the fueling station uh, before. So, again, just be careful. If you are an undesirable in the eyes of the coalition, just, just lay low. And... With I get that. on my walkie-talkie now that I have two, and I hold one up here, and I speak into this one, so we're getting some awesome feedback. I said, sure thing. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, can I get somebody out here to watch me? I got to do some quick repairs on the old truck here. Uh, over your, your walkie-talkie, you hear back, yeah, you'll have uh, approximately an hour to, to work on that, but we will have to get on the road quickly. It is getting dark. Um, you know, it, it's... We, we don't want to be out too long. Uh, I guess we could uh, try to pull off and, and park if you really need to. Um, no, everything's working fine here. I just have to, like, uh, there's, like, a little, I have to touch up the paint scheme on the side here as I'm looking out the big hole in the side of the truck. Do, do you need a human mechanic to aid you? Uh, yeah, if there's one available. Otherwise, you know, let's keep, you know, the big thing going first. The little one I can repair as we go along and. Okay. Silas, well, we Silas pulls out his walkie-talkie and says, Earl Scheib, forty nine ninety nine, no hooks, no extra. <laughs> so he, he did get on the radio. And, uh, Rusty O did say that he needed a, like a loose panel or something, right? Yeah. So I'm on top of this thing. I'm looking for anything that's loose. I'm like pulling up trying to see if so there's anything loose. So at the loose. turret, there are very thin pieces of sheet metal. Oh, yeah, it's coming off. Uh, that have already been ripped off by the... <laughs> The harpies. They there. I did the work for me. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, you, you start pulling up to what looks like a fueling station. Um, let's see. I thought I had this. It's just... Sorry, give me a second. Uh, so you start pulling in, and uh, there is this fueling station. Um but when you pull in, it looks like a normal gas station, right? Uh, it's surrounded by really rough buildings all around it. Uh, and as you pull in, there's this guy, uh, and not pulling, like, this is a large vehicle, so you're not pulling into anything. But there's this guy with these glow sticks, and he starts pointing to the side, uh, telling you guys where, or telling the ship where to go. And um, where would you like to park, though, uh, Victor? Um, since it's, um, they're refueling, I want to like be far enough so that my welding doesn't ex cause an explosion. Okay. I'm assuming they're probably using some type of hydrogen fuel system. So, uh, you would know that there's an area where like combustible engines can go and fill up. Okay. Uh, but then where the big mobile HQ is going is off to the side. They're going to have to run like power lines over to it because it's more yeah. an electrical thing than it is an actual oh, okay. gas for them. All right. So yeah, there's some place where I know it won't cause too big of an explosion. And there is uh, some woods off to each side. If you wanted to pull off into the woods, you could do that as well. Oh, it's to give me like some cover from being seen from the air. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, as you guys are pulling in, to this area, you see a large, uh, sorry, a large death, death's head transport. Now this thing's massive. Uh, this thing is about 76 feet tall. Um, it is also 104 feet wide 
and 240 feet long. Now, this is a big deal because a death, Death's Head Transport is a coalition vehicle. Uh, if you guys have the stream open, you'll see it now. It basically looks like a skull, and it's this, like, flying thing. It's really long, really big. Um, again, it's massive. You would know, uh, if any of you have dealt with Coalition before, uh, this thing could hold upwards of 400 soldiers on it. Most likely doesn't have that many, but there's a lot on it. It is also fueling up at this time in the same area that you guys are. <laughs> and uh, you see off, if any of you are on top looking around, you'll see off to the side by the tree line, you see about 50 uh, coalition dead boys. Uh, a lot of them without their helmets. Almost like they're doing a smoke break. Smoking, hanging out, just bullshitting, not taking things too seriously right now. What would you guys like to do? Work as quickly as possible and get the truck fixed. Okay. Uh, give me a mechanics check for you. And that would count for your whole time out there. Did Bam get those sheets of metal over to him? I, I mean, I, I would have. I don't, I mean. Yeah. So Bam probably jumped down, ran over really quick to give you these. These really thin sheets of metal. Thank you, Bam. You're a good guy. No problem. Hey, so are you going to go scout ahead this time, or are you going to just kind of sit in the turret? Seems kind of boring in the turret, but it's up to you, because I know you're a really mellow type of dude. I know. Seems like we might have some action here, so I might have to get back up top. All right. Oh, hold on one second. Can you just lean against this spot for a second? Okay. Both hands. All right. All right, this and then I'll well, really quick. <laughs> uh, while you guys are doing this, a human, two humans walk up to you uh, in coveralls, uh, very clean coveralls. Uh, hey, you know, we just got off the mobile HQ. We're here to help you with your your vehicle over here. We were told you needed some mechanical assistance. Yeah, yeah. Um, see that big gate gaping hole there? <laughs> yeah. Wh why is there tree bark up in there? How'd that happen? You know, I was just in the parking lot, and I came out and found it like this. Okay. I mean, you had to hit it pretty hard to scrape off the, the bark and get it wedged into the door like that. I mean, that's that's kind of crazy. Well, I, I had three tries at it. Did you succeed on your mechanics check? Yes, I did. I, okay. uh, I so got you can 80... gain half the MDC back. Okay. As you kind of fix up the, the siding there. All right, uh, all of the rest of you, what would you like to do? Uh, you're still on top. Um, from this position up on top, can we see these these guys that are standing down there? Yes. Okay. Um, and you can so... see the Death's Head Transport. This large, again, this is bigger than like an airplane. Like this thing is huge. Yeah, so Jax is actually just... Um, over kind of leaning against this turret taking a smoke break herself um keeping an eye on these dudes down there um just trying to make sure that things still look really casual you know like they haven't noticed uh i mean like not that they haven't noticed us but they're not running back to their transport. They're not doing anything that looks suspicious. She's just keeping an eye on them. Okay. Yeah, they're just shooting the shit, smoking. Probably playing pranks on each other, just bullshitting. What's Silas doing? So uh, Silas is just keeping a close eye on uh, the coalition members that are out there having their smoke break. <clears throat> okay. How about our glitter boy? What are you doing? Are you still in your glitter boy suit? Uh, glitter yes, boys sir. tend to be enemies of the coalition. If they saw that, you would know that would be probably. Yeah. Problems. Yeah. We'll uh, try to get that stowed away. <laughs> okay. Yep. You're able to, you probably got that stowed away in the back again before yeah. you pulled up here, especially if the announcement that, hey, you know, there's possibly coalition in the area. 
Yeah. And got to clean clean off the, the blood and guts off of it. You're in the bay just, just polishing just, your yeah, just, boy? Yeah, pretty much giving her a bath. I love it. <laughs> yeah, there's like a hose with water. Like, you know, it's recycled water. So even when it goes like into the floor, it like gets reused throughout this thing. It's great. It's eco-friendly just for uh, our old friend Sasha. Too bad she's not with us anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, if she's <laughs> in the water supply... <laughs> yeah, some of her blood might be no, it would get filtered out. <laughs> awesome. All right, what about uh, our juicer? What's our juicer doing now? Yeah, so I uh, run back up on top on the, the HQ. I pull out my uh, JA11, courtesy of War Brotherhood Incorporated uh, assault rifle, and take one of the exploding rounds out, and I start to aim at this nasty coalition vehicle that's fueling up maybe you know uh if we're out of range or at some point or maybe i just get bored i'm gonna uh, shoot it and try to hit the uh the fuel point and see if i can ignite the whole fuel point and the vehicle <laughs> yes okay you know. so you are within range Excellent. Um, like this thing from the top from the front of this hq uh, you're probably talking about 30 yards away. <laughs> Your vehicle is currently plugged in. Uh, it's yeah, got these it. large cables running from the building, one of the buildings out, and it's plugged into the side of the front of the uh, where the pilots are, just underneath where you are standing, or where you are crouched. But we started fueling up before them. Uh, they were here at the same, uh, a little bit before you, actually. But they're getting gas or some kind of other form of fuel. You're getting electrical. Oh, so we're on two different systems. Yes. Oh, really? So when I see him pull out this, this big guy... <laughs> Jax is going to be like, you know, hey, man, like, maybe we should try and be a little low key on this, you know? Yeah, we are, we are being low key. I, 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 you didn't see me run over and try to use that big bomb with the numbers, right? Go save that. I, I mean, yeah, man, but like, let's just let's just be chill, you know? Hey, is uh, somebody keep an eye on that damn juicer up there? <laughs> No, dude, I'm trying, but Juicer, I don't know if it's going to help. Don't do it, you hear over the PA. We've got an eye on them, too. I, I don't think we have the firepower to take them out. Don't know if you don't try. <laughs> if we use the big gun, we're going to blow ourselves up in this whole little fueling station. We can't do that. <laughs> Look, man, why don't you just, like, do some push-ups or something? You know? <laughs> like... Just, you know, you think you could do more push-ups than me? Like, let's have a contest. Like, let's do this right now. Right here, right now. I'll arm wrestle you. All right. <laughs> it's, it's in my hand waiting for that roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got my, I'm, I'm, I'm watching them, see if they do anything. Okay. Uh, I mean, they're not even paying attention. Like, they feel pretty secure. It's, I mean, you guys would know it's not often that a death's head transport gets attacked. So it's not like they feel vulnerable right now. Um, you know, and as as I say this, uh, you see, because the ramp like is opened for them to exit and enter out of the back of this thing. Uh, you see some skelebots, uh, which basically look like the same. Like, they almost look the same thing. They're all black and white. That's what their armor looks like. Uh, and you see a few skelebots step out uh, of the Death's Head transport. And, like, they're just kind of scanning around. They almost look like the Terminator uh, machines. But again, it's all black and white. White looks like bone. And then it's just black to fill in, like, the outer parts of the plating. Uh, and they got rifles. And they're just looking around, scanning the, the area. Again, you know they're not humans. They're just robots. Soulless beast. 
All right. I guess we're just keeping an eye out to make sure that nothing, nothing looks questionable. Okay. So you guys here, 95% full filled up. We'll be ready to go in just a few moments. All right. Start up, try to put all the tools away and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. The coffee bank got damaged. <laughs> uh sir can you please not talk about your coffee beans over the the uh intercom the intercom is, that, is reserved for non-coffee bean conversation that is, is not that, an emergency we need to worry about is that a french roast <laughs> colombian mm. last call if you guys want to get some extra energy clips or, or eclipse or, or something if you need to I better top off my uh, power supply. Okay. So. All right. So after a couple moments, you're topped off. Uh, you guys hear the mobile HQ start powering up. Uh, before the mobile HQ powers up, though, you see all the, the soldiers get back into the, the death head, death's head transport. And they, uh, they head off east. And the mobile HQ starts heading north again. Uh, you guys are traveling uh, north for, for a while. Um, Juicer, give me a straight D20 roll. Four. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, you're super bored. Uh, it's dark. You can't see much. Uh, it's it's just really dark. Um, I, think, I think the reason I didn't shoot at that thing is I fell asleep and it left. So <laughs> I crashed again. That's not good. Yeah, but you slept for 10 minutes, so now you're energized. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. good you're go. ready to go for the next 24. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm assuming you guys are all situated back where you originally were. Um, so you start moving... Uh, north after about 45 minutes or so uh you come up to what can only be described as the great lake lake huron and uh you hear over the intercom all right uh anybody who's capable of handling a weapon get up top uh over the the mic or over the the things if you've got your your vehicles your your glitter boy armor uh you know, you might want to put it up top. The, the bays are probably going to flood in the back. Uh, don't worry. Uh, he, they single you out, Silas. Your horse is going to be fine. It's a seahorse, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, they they lower a ramp for the mountaineer to, to drive up on top on the, the left side. Okay, uh, so I'll be, I will be physically on top of it. Yep, your vehicle okay. will have to be on top. Yep. Okay, no problem. And as this happens, uh, it waits for a second, uh, and you hear some kind of gears in this thing doing something. You have no idea what it is, but it's loud. The whole thing is rumbling as it's sitting there. And uh, once everyone is situated, it does this for about another 10, 15 minutes before it moves and starts going into the water. And it partially submerges, but starts floating, almost like a like a uh, aircraft carrier on the lake. Now the lake is about, uh, I want to say like 300 feet across. Um, I could be wrong. Uh, but anyway, so it starts going into the lake and uh, the, the vehicle's kind of bouncy, like, like a little bit more than you would expect. And Anybody who's on this who gets seasickness would probably feel it pretty quick because of how rough it is. What were you going to say, Victor? Oh, I was going to tell um, it's like, hey, I know it sounds weird, but that sucker can fly. So if we have any problems that we need to go attack, we can put a squad of men in the back. There you go. So it continues to move across, 
And all of a sudden, from behind you, you see a spotlight in the distance. Um, and as it approaches, you can tell it's on a large vehicle in the air. And as it gets closer, it looks a lot like that vehicle you saw at the fueling station. What would you guys like to do? Hmm. Hit that, hit that, keep that juicer. <laughs> I walk over, walk you say over that you. over your com. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, right. walk over to the juicer, blood bomb. We go, you know, I heard a rumor. If you shoot, if you shoot right down that exhaust port, the whole thing explodes. Yeah, I saw it in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I got the 12 Park series in my uh on my DVD player inside. So nice. as as this spotlight's getting bigger, you hear something uh like like jet engines. Uh and you see two coalition SAMAS uh flying in. They're these coalition soldiers with guns. Uh, and these wings with jet thrusters on the back flying in. Uh, and it seems like they're coming straight for the mobile HQ. Okay, be cool, be cool. All right. Jax is running over to that turret. Okay. You're, you get to the turret. And and she's... <laughs> Punching in the code. I don't... I'm. Oh, I'm, are you at the gun turret or the missile the, no, the, the 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 gun turret. No, oh, she'll yeah. she'll leave she'll leave the the missile up to you know somebody else who wants to make decisions. <laughs> um, you know the person who wants to figure out whether or not there's an enter button or not. <laughs> um, and she's 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 just gonna man the gun on the turret, and I don't know. We're fire at them, right? Isn't that what we're gonna do? Uh, I don't know. Let them That's... shoot first. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. So she's waiting at the turret for them to attack us and try and kill us first. I, I would get ready to. I'd get ready to fight this because once they see me, it's gonna go all hell loose. <laughs> Speaking of which, two. So you see two of these things, and they unload on the glitter boy. Uh, they well, do... isn't he down below? Nope. No. It, he all vehicles had to be on top because oh. of, again, you guys are sitting ducks, and on top of that, the base take in water sometimes. So, gotcha. uh, so anyways, uh, all right. So they are going to hit the glitter boy uh, at range. So you see these like just missiles go shooting out and they hit you for 40 points of damage. It hits you dead center of your glitter boy suit. <sighs> Large explosion comes from the, the front of your glitter boy suit. Uh. And roll initiative, everybody. That 20. That 20 for O'Connell. Yep. Ooh, All right. What'd you get, um, Jax? I also got a nat 20. All right. What'd you get, Bam? 19. Dang. McLean. Uh, that would be a good old three. A three? Yeah. Jeez. Silas. A respectable 15. 15. Hey, I did get hit. So, you know, I got stunned, man. Like, <laughs> what? So the large thing in the distance, uh, it's a ways out. Um, it's probably a good 400 yards out. But these two other uh, Samus? flying Samus pilots are within a round. Like, they'll be on the top of this if they wanted to be. Um, they probably won't land. You would assume that they wouldn't necessarily land. Yeah. Um, but they are pretty close. Uh, so with that, it is 
We'll start with... What's your modifier, Jax and O'Connell? Do you have an initiative modifier? I don't. No. no. Uh, you guys can decide who's going to go first. You can go first. All right, so O'Connell first. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to head back towards the truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, can I tell how far away we are from the shoreline that we're crossing? Uh, you're... To the other shore. The other side is a little bit further still than the original shoreline. So uh, you're close. If you wanted to go back, you could. Yeah. Uh, you could probably get there pretty quickly. I'm assuming because you're talking about flying your vehicle. Yeah. You um, could fly it back and get there. The one across, you can't even see it yet. It's too dark. Okay. Uh, who's the who's in command of this? Was it the... So the uh, original guy did not get on this. Okay. He stayed back at the base. We know. Do we know who is the guy uh, running yeah, the show? Yeah, you would know pi the pilot. Okay. Yeah. I'll ask the pilot if he wants me to try to distract him while you guys try to get across. Whatever you can do, keep him off our backs. That's that's fine. Okay. Is there anybody else in the truck? Does <laughs> doesn't sound like anybody's jumping in. All right. Okay. So you're well, in your truck. Good. Yep. So uh, we'll go ahead and take off, start heading back towards the shoreline. Hopefully the Samus will follow me. Okay. Uh, I hate this plan. I, and on the radio, I'm going, I hate this plan. I hate this plan. I hate this plan. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to drive your truck <laughs> off and then fly it? Yep. Back? And I'm going to do okay. the same thing. Uh, this time I'm just going to play dust in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> and have the headlights on bright. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I hate and this whole time you're hearing that this is a dumb plan. This is the last time I ever listened to that O'Connell guy. <laughs> All right. Jax, you see this this uh big U-Haul sized truck go driving and flying off. Uh do you have your spotlights on or your headlights on at least? Oh yeah, I want to be really clear that I'm leaving. <laughs> All right. All right. You guys see the lights go off into the distance. Uh and so, it, are you gonna fly right past the same as pilots? Um, are they coming that way? They're coming They're from coming. the south, yes. Okay, and I'm heading towards the south? Yes. Oh, man, this plan's working perfectly. <laughs> so you could, in theory, fly under them and pass them. Still. Yeah. Okay. So you fly under and yeah. pass them. Yeah. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not flying casually. I'm bobbing, weaving side to side. and space ball style. Yeah. <laughs> Throw. Right. Throw some strawberry jam out the window. I mean. <laughs> All right, Jax, what are you doing? Um, so Jax is at this turret, and she's going to try and fire on these incoming aircraft. Okay. Okay. Um, so that is a nine. To try and hit them. Uh, the one dodges out of the way. So you miss. Bam. You see Jax take a shot and miss as the okay. Samus pilot corkscrews out of the way. Okay. And the, uh, the, the big, uh, the big beast is like 400 yards away, right? Yeah. It's a ways away still, but you can see it's spotlight. And do have I? Do I see O'Connell's Rustio's vehicle? Yeah, you can see his lights going off uh, in the distance. Is he headed towards that thing, or is he going to like the side? Yeah, he's heading towards the thing. He went under the the pilots. Okay, the two that's, that's individuals. Plan Plan A. Uh and the moment's gone. Okay, and then I just run and grab my uh, J11. Oh. Uh, War Brotherhood Incorporated uh, assault rifle, and I'm going to shoot at one of these things, but I'm going to take a, a round to aim. Okay. And I'm going to use one of the exploding rounds. Okay. Uh, what's the r blast radius of it? It uh, does not say. There's a range, there's no blast radius. Okay. Uh, they're pretty close together, so we could assume it would get okay. both of them. All right. Is it MDC or SDC? 
uh, says the exploding round is not specify but uh oh it's it's uh total it's stc okay you want me to wait or you want me to attack no go ahead and attack sorry i just okay. need to know what type of damage it was that's all oh okay okay uh yeah that's a miss all right so you shoot and miss and uh you O'Connell, as you're flying underneath these things, you see this round hit the shoreline, like must have hit something on the shoreline, but just goes poof, and you see a huge explosion not too far in front of you. I'm going to get on the radio and scream on an open channel. Watch your fire. We got the valuables in the back. (laughs) (laughs) It's the coffee maker. Yeah. Shoreline, shoreline's clear. Shoreline's clear. <laughs> All right. With that, it is Silas's turn. Um. All right. So Silas, watching uh, Jacks on the turret, just kind of uh, sort of slowly shakes his head and levels his C twelve at the uh, at one of these um, one of these flying monstrosities, uh, and mm-hmm. I'll. Fire it up. looks like a guy's feet are dangling, like he's about to ride a roller coaster, but he's got nice. wings off the side and jets off the wings, and he's holding this gun that's like really like kind of attached to the wings and everything. So I'll fire a three round burst at uh the one closest. Okay. That is a sixteen to hit. All right. And I'm gonna try to dodge. He does not dodge well. Uh you hit. Nice. Um, he takes 8, 10, 15, 19, 20 points of damage, uh, MDC damage. Okay, let's see if he's able to keep control. All right, yeah, so you hit, um, and you see it, like his feet start going side to side. It, it does how many points again? Uh, 20 points of MDC damage. And you hit it in oh okay so you hit it in the head uh and you can see one of the so the eyes of these things look like skulls but the eyes are red and when you hit it one of the the eyes goes out uh it's no longer red Uh, but it's still flying and with that we are now over to their turn so we're gonna return fire on the juicer first. <laughs> All right. So I rolled a nine to shoot at you. You're going to auto dodge, I'm assuming. Yep. At 20. All right. Well, it misses you. And the mobile HQ takes some damage. <laughs> uh, so then the next one is going to attack. Uh, it's actually going to attack. Let's see who Jack's missed. Silas hit, so it's going to attack you back, Silas. Uh, this is the one that's got the one eye out. Uh, all right, that is a nineteen. And then, are you going to dodge? I, uh, I'm going to attempt to parry. So I have you to beat parry ranged, unfortunately. Oh. Uh... So if I dodge, I give up my next action. No, I'm not going to do okay. that. All right, so, seven. so you're going to take 15 points of MDC damage center mass right to your chest and stomach. Got it. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. So you get blasted. Uh, that was their turn. Uh, next up is O'Connor. I'm sorry, McLean. Sorry. All right. Um, I probably should have shot you. I'm <laughs> feeling the burn, and I'm just I forgot mad. About the I'm mad. <laughs> it hurt my baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna use, gonna fire at whatever one. I don't care. Just with a <laughs> rail gun. All right. Eighteen. All right. 
Uh, yeah, you hit. <laughs> I'm assuming you're hitting the one that's been hit in the head. Yeah. Let's go with that one. Roll big or go home. Uh, nine, ten. Ten times ten is a hundred. Oh, shit. Okay, so you hit the shoulder of this thing, uh, and you can see blows like a chunk off, and uh, it starts spiraling. It almost looks like it's losing control, but he gains control back and continues to fly. So he's taking quite a bit of damage now. Um, I can't remember. Hey, Victor, can you pull yes. up the uh, MDC armor of the Samus? Yeah, give me for a the, moment. For all the different spots. For some reason I didn't write that down. I don't know why. Uh, okay, so next up is actually you, Victor. So if you want to do that, and then we'll resolve the all right. other stuff. I'm dodging if... You're dodging? Yeah, I don't have any, like, outside weapons on here. That'd be crazy. Oh, okay. <clears throat> So you're going to land on the shore then? No, I'm going to stay in the air. I want them to follow me away, so. Right, right, right. But you want the vehicle to land on the shore, right? No, you want to keep flying? I want to keep flying because I can keep flying for six minutes. Okay. Then I, then I have to pump more PP and the E into it. Okay. Uh, bam, it is your turn. Hmm. We're on second three of the 15 seconds. So I assume that this other weapon that says 2D4 slash 3D6 would be the aim portion because it doesn't hit. All the other ones have aim. Is it a gun? Matter. No, it's yeah. based on how many rounds you're shooting. Oh, okay. If you're doing a single shot or a burst, I think. Okay, because, all right. But you have so, a penalty if you're doing a burst shot. What's the penalty? Uh, it should be on the crib sheet. I don't remember. Uh, neg what was it when you shoot first? Do you remember? Mine is uh, negative two. Negative three. Okay. Okay. Hmm. How high are these guys in the air? Off the ground? Yeah. Hundreds of feet. Hmm. Probably like 200 feet. Okay, uh, I'm just going to take out my um, my JA-11. Uh... Actually, they're about 100 feet. Sorry. Sorry okay. for the confusion. Uh, JA-11 uh, laser rifle. Okay. Uh, You're going to hit by... the one that's been hit or the one that hasn't? Yeah, the one that's been hit. By... Okay. Yeah, my dead plan, uh, J-11 laser rifle. And I'm going to shoot at it. I'm going to right. aim, so that would be another. All right. Okay. Roll big. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Music to my ears. Uh, so that would be nine. All right. All right, you hit. Okay. Okay. I did find the coalition Samus armor. All right. Just a moment, Victor. Okay. Oh, it takes 14 MDC. All right. So it takes 14 MDC to that same shoulder. Yep. All right. Now, what did you get for the uh, body of that Samus? Uh, what did you get, Victor? It's 250 for the main body. Okay. Shoulder wings are 30 each. Okay. Main jets are 30 each. Lower jets are 25 each. Head is 70. Railgun's 50, and missile launcher is 50. Okay. And then it would use his regular armor for his body and stuff, right? Main body, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So you hit it in the shoulder. The shoulder was already useless. Uh, it had already been blasted. So when you shoot this guy, uh, there's no armor to protect him. And you see this goes flying straight down. Uh, jets are still going, and it blasts the water like just like a belly flop. 
and you see the water just because it hit with such force uh, go flying up in the air. So one of them is down. There's now Store. one more. And with that, it is now their turn. And they, the, there's only one now, uh, are going to attack the Glitter Boy. All right, so I have a 13 to hit. Do you want to dodge or take it? Uh, I'll take it. Okay. All right, so you take... From this big blast, uh, you take about you take sixty points of damage to the leg okay. of your armor, the right leg. All right. And it is now Bam's turn again. Or I'm sorry, it's Jack's turn. What you doing, Jax? All right, so can we still see, like, the main vehicle? Yeah, and it's getting closer. Uh, McConnell sees it coming up on it. It's getting pretty close. All right, so... That um, is 200 feet up in the air, though. Since, I mean, she thought, she thought that Blood Bam was going to go after those codes and try and handle that but since he's slacking over there um she <laughs> is um gonna run in that direction i don't know if there's like uh you can get there up here or if it's inside no it's on top okay. it's like the just like the gunning consoles it's on top um you can get there uh, all right so she's gonna she's gonna head over there and Punch in her code. All right. So she flips See the switch can... to power it up. When she powers it up, it says, enter your access code. Um, which, which, she... What number is your access code? Downloading <laughs> only 10%. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, we should do that. Like the one game. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, go I know. I was. I thought he was going to say, like, powering up or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Um, so Jax runs <laughs> over there, right? She's mm -hmm. powering this thing up. She types in 5416 and hits five enter. Four one, five, four, one, six. Welcome, Jax. Code accepted. <laughs> Would you like a beverage? <laughs> enter coordinates for your missile strike. Um, great. So she's Do you have gonna... weapon systems or anything like that in your skills? Good question. <laughs> Perhaps this is why I shouldn't be the person doing this. Oh, no, I sure do. I sure there got go. weapon systems. You switched to just the right character for the, the occasion, it seems. What are you talking about? I got great weapon systems. <laughs> All yeah. Right. Okay. My Yeah, so I, I rolled under. I got a 73. My weapon systems is an 85. Okay, so you based on what you think, you're you're lining it up. You you look back and you're like, okay, uh, it's approximately that far. You push all the buttons, and all of a sudden, this missile thing lines itself like it raises up even higher and shoots this ballistic missile. And like when it shoots, you see this uh, mobile HQ submerge almost fully underwater for a second as the force of this thing. And then it starts bouncing, letting off these huge waves. And this missile goes up into the air out of sight above the clouds. And it is now over to Silas's turn. Uh, okay, so Silas is kind of in awe as this thing um, takes off. He's also a little pissed off that he didn't get to mount it before it uh, before it took off into the horizon. Come on. Well, <clears throat> in order to mount this, in order to do that, you have to have a cowboy hat. 
So he, well, Silas has a cowboy hat. Of course, <laughs> so, well, that goes without saying, right? Look, he so, is he is definitely up on his accessories. Exactly. I feel like that is who he is. Yes. Um, uh, and a gold pocket watch on a chain. Um, but anyway, uh, so um, Silas will level his uh, C12 again. Um he'll look over at Jax first and kind of wink and smile and then he'll level his C12 uh, at one of these Sams and... Yep, there's uh, only one left. Okay. Well, the, the, at the remaining one and that is uh, 14 to hit. Okay. Uh, it will miss. Okay, okay. So, again, Silas is sort of half staring at this missile launching into the stratosphere and uh he's kind of not really paying attention to where he's firing at and he yeah he misses so all right bam uh what are you doing well first uh i check on this weapon since it's got a recording device to make sure that it was fully recorded for uh dead clan uh, company so they saw that awesome hit and then of course i hit the button turn around look at me so you know <laughs> Give a little promo, say, you know. Uh, then this uh, huge rocket takes off. Kind of disappointed. While you're recording yourself, the rocket goes yeah. off in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Very epic. By the way, it's nighttime. And so this thing, like, <laughs> it lights it's up the sky. Yep, the background, perfect lighting. All, all of all of uh, all of Bloods or all of Bam's um, sponsors start calling him and asking him who Jax is behind him, uh, and that they you know they'd really like to offer a, a, a sponsorship to, to Jax now. They want to bring her into the Juicer program. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, too bad I missed those calls. Um, <laughs> So what is this other, uh, is he just flying up? Does he do anything? Does he pursue the rocket? Does what, what's going on? The Samus him? pilot is yeah. still flying in at you. Okay. Uh, he's probably about 30 feet behind the, the mobile HQ at this point. Okay. How far above the ground are we? Uh, you guys, at the moment, because of the ballistic missile, you're like a couple feet above the water. Okay, so uh, 30 feet. I'm pretty sure I could jump off the back of this thing 30 feet and hit this guy. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go okay, that's so what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm like going to do... fly and kick him, or are you going to grab on? What you doing? Yeah, I'll be uh, flying kick. That would be good. All right. God, that's a fail. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys see the the juicer like take a couple steps back and run and do this flying karate kick and just go sailing past. I'm assuming it was a four or less. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And just lands in the water, big splash, right next to the dead other pilot who's uh floating actually on the top. There's a built in flotation in this suit for some reason. Okay, good. And uh, it's right next to you. Uh, All right. Now it is McLean's turn. Uh, you notice that the, the Samus pilots did not follow you. You saw the ballistic missile in your rear view. Mm -hmm. Or not in your rear view, but you know what I'm saying. You saw mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And based on your systems, you can see that it's actually moving south. Uh, at a rapid speed, and uh, by the way, Jax, what was the damage on that? Um, it was um, eleven thousand. Okay, <laughs> and all of a sudden, the missile comes straight down out of the clouds, blasts the center of this huge Death's Head transport explodes the whole thing into tons of pieces and the fire starts catching the woods on fire. Sasha would not be proud, but Jax feels damn good about herself right now. What are you doing, Glitter Boy? There's one pilot 
about 30 feet away from you guys. Um, I'm going to try to do an aim shot. All right. Where are you aiming? Uh, oh, never mind. Aim is different than a called shot. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Roll your uh, to hit. All right. B to 17. Ooh, nat 20. All right. So. Double your damage. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, eight, and you hit it in the head. Um, this is 180 MDC. All right. So when you blast this thing, again, you're your thrusters turn on so you don't go flying back and you just shoot this gun and boom! And when it hits the head, you see the head go flying off. You decapitate him with the blast or just blow it off and, into smithereens like to the point where you don't even see pieces. And the again, the suit just crashes right into the water. And we're out of combat. Your juicer's swimming behind. How you doing over there, juicer? What you doing? Is the is the flotation device is that mean that he activated is he alive oh no he's dead okay he doesn't even have a shoulder anymore it's gone so do these thrusters uh or is there a way to detach them uh you would are you trained in pilot power armor or anything like that Um, motorcycle? It could be one of your skills. <laughs> motorcycle! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you have no idea how to operate it. How to undo it or anything. Okay. Uh, so what I would say is roll under your intelligence with percentiles. Right. You might have like a 9% chance or something. Good luck. <laughs> Well, he's been roll. He's been rolling low. Yeah. Uh, no, not with a ninety-eight. <laughs> you rolled a ninety-eight. Yeah. So you've managed to somehow sink the power armor. You don't know what you did, but you're like moving it around. You're like messing with the helmet, and all of a sudden you hear it just go, and it starts sinking. Quick. <laughs> you let out all the air of the suit. The other suit did not float. It just sunk. What's your, uh, do you have like swim as a skill? Yeah, I do. Uh, all right, roll a swim check. <laughs> oh, no, I failed that. Okay. Uh, the waves are, because again, that ballistic missile, and this thing's just acting like a big, like a kid in a bathtub that's like jumping up and down in the bathtub, and the water is doing that at scale and it like the waves are really tough you're struggling for air um what is everyone else doing that seems unlikely but they don't have one of those you know like signs that say like emergency use and then have like a flotation <laughs> device nope you know like you know like you're like the lifeguard stand or whatever um nope okay <laughs> <laughs> this juicer might not live for five more years <laughs> um what i've been doing is uh, dodging flaming wreckage flying falling from the sky <laughs> yep <laughs> and saying not my fault not my fault <laughs> as as you turn and around then, uh i'm assuming you're heading back to the hq now yeah and i'll pick up if anybody's in the water yeah, as I say, you do see him in the water with your headlights. Okay. Uh, barely. Like, you see an arm that you know is the juicer because he's flipping you off at the same time that he's underwater. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll try and get the truck to hover. I'm not sure how you make a truck hover, but I'm sure there's controls there. Yeah, Flow give me a pilot check. All right. Do you have climbing juicer as a skill? Yes, I did make it. I do have climbing. Okay, give me a climb check as this. And and give a, I'll give you a 5% bonus because of the dents in the side. Nine. And the rope ladder too. 9%? Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, dude, you climb it, no problem. The sweet sounds of dust in the wind. I emerge <laughs> out of the water. <laughs> yes, you're able to pull yourself up on the dents on the side, uh, yep. and you pull, and you're sitting right next to uh, O'Connell now. Um, yeah, you guys managed to get back to the uh, craft and land on top of it again. And uh, you hear over the comms, uh, is everyone all right back there? We saw the explosion. I- I'm pretty sure the Your whole two comms world... are broken, by the way, Juicer. They got wet. <laughs> yeah, I- I'm sure everybody in the Northern Hemisphere saw that explosion. Yeah, did you see that? That was awesome. Yeah. You guys, that was you... that was great. I did great. I did I did so good. And it's too bad that sometimes the electric, uh, the magnetic pulse sometimes will just totally delete all video for miles around. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're entering coalition territory again, and you guys might want to be on high alert. So the moment another... HQ pulls up on on the land, as it says that. Well, that big explosion doesn't really help. I mean, we got another one of those, right? Nope, one. One hit wonder. <laughs> oh. Damn it. I mean, like, my bad. I didn't, I didn't know about that. They didn't tell me that in the briefing. <laughs> um, excuse me. They I ain't even a, mad. Didn't you read the pamphlet they gave you with the code? There, you got, you got a pamphlet? I got a pamphlet. Man, they just scribbled <laughs> some numbers on a little piece of paper and told me... You know, if things look rough, and man, I'm just telling you, things looked pretty rough. So uh, I'm just standing there, like for five hours, but you didn't get a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys uh, start pulling up. Uh, you start driving on the land again, and you notice after about another forty-five minutes. Uh, you hear over your comms, guys, we're pulling in. We've made it. And you see this small rickety town uh, as the sun's starting to kind of come up a little because it's like sunset time or whatever. Not sunset, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, sunrise? As, yeah, sunrise. And as you pull in, uh, you see this small town that just looks like a bunch of scrap sheet metal put together, which uh, you've always heard that anything up here is pretty much pretty high tech, actually. And uh, in the distance, you see uh, three of the death's head transports. And we're going to end the session right there. So how was it? You guys, it was good. Mission accomplished. But who knows if we continued, you're probably dead. (laughs) Part two. But who knows? Maybe, maybe. I uh, mean, it'd be session two, character three. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you think of the, like, active defense? Do you kind of like that? Do you dislike it? Is it a little much? Feel free to be as honest as you want. So I dig the, uh, I actually dig the active defense. But I actually like the way that damage is assigned. It feels more natural to me. In other words, your armor is going to take damage before you would actually take damage. I think, you know, in a lot of RPGs, it's a little muddy as to how that works. Yeah. So I dig I dig that. I dig it a lot. Um, I, I think I finally am starting to get a grasp around sort of the action economy. Mm-hmm. Here's what I will say, right? Like, and again, I'm kind of off today. My head's a little foggy and I'm like, yeah. you know, I, but, but what I'll say is I like I would love to play this game. You couldn't pay me to run this game, right? Like I mean it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it yeah. just it yeah. seems like it just seems like a nightmare to run, right? Like yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking as somebody who's like ran Palladium games, my limit's usually four players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says, but the players aren't even what make it difficult. It's yeah. the amount of NPCs. Like, for example, if somehow you didn't blow up the big ship and say i threw out 10 of the guys i have 10 guys to keep track of how many actions did they use did they use a dodge i actually didn't even i was like screw it i'm not keeping track of the dodge like they have auto dodge i don't give a shit <laughs> like and that's how i was treating it because i was like i can't it's just too much you know and yeah oh yeah you know but like my little sheet you can see it here uh that's how i was keeping track of combat 
Like, just spacing things out and crossing things out as you did actions. Pain in the ass, yeah. you know? Uh, so I, I understand that. And like you said, they, I do think the intent of the system dating back almost 40 years now was to try and simulate reality as much as possible with, like, your actions and if things hit your armor or not. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and yeah, I, and I, I think I, that... I think, the SDC MDC concept makes sense, you know, from the fact like you can't, no matter, no matter how hard you can punch, you're not going to punch into a tank, you yeah. know, like, yeah. so yeah. you, you just can't, you can't hit it. You can't do damage to it. You have to have the right type of weapon to be able to do that. So from that sense, I think it makes sense, but initially it does feel confusing Mm -hmm. but then i think you get it you know but right one of the cool things that i like that savage rifts did is whether you're using an mdc weapon or an sdc weapon you did the same amount of damage but if something was uh an mdc creature and you shot it with sdc it did no damage whereas if it's the opposite say it's doing mdc damage and you're an sdc creature if it hits you for five points it's still only five points and so I liked how they did that because it simplified the whole idea. Like in the harpies are technically like a magical creature. I just gave them an arbitrary 10 MDC, but they're a magical creature. So that's why they had immunity to SDC. But in theory, it should have been their SDC creatures. And where if you do an MDC, it's still, sh- you know, like I kind of like if I would have poured it over the Savage Rift stuff a little bit, that would have worked a little better better in my opinion because it is stupid that's like oh it's a bird creature why doesn't my magnum blow its freaking arm off you know yeah right so so yeah I, I get you there it's and it's the same thing with like the juicer like he can get smashed by a car but it's only gonna do sdc damage it's not actually gonna hurt him no matter how fast it's going right, right. it's like that's stupid it should kill him mm-hmm. the whiplash alone will probably kill him. or at very least he would lose an action or two possibly yeah 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 it's like, like yeah, you're, you're flying through the sky you land yeah. 100 feet away that takes time to happen yep so i mean thing- i don't know he's got some crazy stuff in those granola bars so maybe <laughs> not like- right so the other thing uh so i grew up on heroes unlimited which doesn't have mdc or didn't they've added stuff since that you can kind of have it but it's better without and the armor works a little differently in that. So you have an armor rating in that one. So that is kind of like an armor class, but it soaks damage. Uh, and then it eventually is useless, right? Um, and it only covers certain body parts. So again, if you're wearing a flak jacket, you get shot in the arm, you're still taking normal damage. You know, so there's... And I was using the hit die. If you guys didn't do a call shot, I rolled to see where you were uh, the whole time. Like the, like the old Cyberpunk 2020 system. Yeah, so I was rolling the whole time this every time. That's why sometimes you're like, wow, you rolled like three times there. What are you rolling for? <laughs> like, that's why. Um, but I like I like, I like like the system. I do hope one day it does get simplified just a touch, just a touch, because uh, it is hard to keep track of everything at times. And At first level, you can have anywhere from, I think, three attacks up to like six, Ooh. you know, as a first level character. <laughs> It also doesn't need the leveling up. I think you could get rid of that and just work in the skills a little differently. Because I don't, I'm okay with the skills being percentile and regular actions being a D20. I'm fine with like that hybrid. Generally, if if a game if a game has is skill based, but specifically with percentile based, right? It is there. There are no levels, right? Like you don't right. level in that type of system. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Instead, you get skill. Like you can move up the skill. With exactly. Use, right. Yep. right. Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. Um, is the one that comes to mind. This system, I think, was also, well, Rift specifically, I think, was like 1990 or something. Am I right, Victor? What year was it? I think it was 89? before then. Maybe 89? Um, in that time. I know yeah. the SDC, their fantasy, was like eight years before that or something. It was like early I, 80s. I did grab one of the old books because I had a mutation sharp, but I didn't roll on it. But, yeah, it's pretty old. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, again, I like it. There's a lot of cool stuff. I like the setting of Rifts. Obviously, you guys didn't get to explore that very much. Um, <coughs> I kind of gave a little quick rundown based on the descriptions in the core book of yeah. what Michigan's like. 
Uh, Indiana doesn't really have anything as far as I know in the core book. And yeah. I don't have a lot of the riffs books. Um, you, sh I, you should have told me that I would have give you, I could have gave you a couple of locations and <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm actually they near. They don't exist anymore in the Midwest I, though. I, uh, well, you know, <laughs> Hey, there is a, there is an air force base nearby that's retired. Oh, so that would have been perfect. And, and yeah, it's in that general area where we started. Yeah. See, perfect. I should have done that. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. It seems like the viewers liked it. Uh, we had one person in particular who said they'd watch a whole campaign of this. So that was kind of cool to hear. Uh, I wasn't sure because, again, I'm so focused on the numbers that are happening. I'm a little bit taken out of the game as a GM. Um, as opposed to, like, if I'm playing a game I'm really, it's more fluid and I'm more familiar with, yeah. I can actually pay more attention to what you guys are, like, doing and role playing and stuff. Um, but this just makes it a little bit too hard for me to focus on all that. So, is it a system all of you would play again? Yes. I would say yes, but yeah. That's, yeah. but yeah. I got like twenty thousand different books for Riff, so I like the system. <laughs> yeah. like, right? Yeah, yeah. probably about three milk crates full of books for the system. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun to play. I like it a lot as a player. As a, as a GM, it's something I like to do every once in a while and pull it out and dust off the couple books I have. Uh, I'll always like it. It'll always have a fun spot in my heart, you know, as the system that kind of got me into role playing games. So cool. I mean, I originally had the first Rift book for a couple of years before I even ran a Rift game just because it's like, yeah. oh, I like this fluff text. Oh, this is what a Samus is. I kind of like that. <laughs> I could work this into this other game I'm running. Right. I made characters for Heroes Unlimited. Other than the very first campaign I played, I made Heroes for almost a decade before I played it again. So, and that was. 2000 and I don't know. Well, maybe not a decade. Maybe five years. So it's probably like, no? Oh, somewhere in there. But yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching the stream. Uh, we're going to end the stream there. Uh, it was awesome having you. And there was a lot of comments. I might have to go back and watch it just to check out the comments. But thank you again, guys. Uh, we will be streaming tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, I do a Sunday stream. I missed it last week, but I'll be doing it this week. I'll probably talk about this game. Some of the issues I had with like the mechanics and some of that stuff. So if you're interested, come in and, you know, I basically just shoot the breeze. It's a little bit more freestyle. There's no real format. So, yeah. Uh, and I, I interact with the chat and we just have a good time for at least an hour. So sometimes I think I've gone like three and a half hours before, but yeah. That won't happen tomorrow. It'll probably just be like an hour, hour and a half because yeah. Paula will kill me because she wants to study for her exams. So. <laughs> Well, I'm off tomorrow so I can actually watch it. There you go. So it'll be 11 a.m. Eastern time, and we will see you guys next time. So game on. Oh, and hit subscribe. And like. <laughs>